All right. What's poppin' Tub Nation? Welcome back to Tub Takes. This is a uh, video podcast where we go over what's been making waves in the VGC scene. Today, I am joined by Ashen. Hi. We've got John. Here as always. And as always, we also have Adi. Hello, everyone. Welcome more, back more to always Tub Takes. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, yeah, we're... Uh, we're excited to talk about a lot of different things today. Um, we've got some fun topics, locals, Japan Nats, um, Malmo and Hartford coming up, as well as uh, the Calc is always right towards the end. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be covering all that uh, in about that order and answering your questions. So if you have any questions in the uh, chat, feel free to drop them. We'll be keeping up with it. Um, and then uh, lastly, if uh, you're here now, but you won't be able to make it through the whole stream, uh, feel free to catch it on YouTube on Wednesday. Uh, it'll be uploaded on an Audi's YouTube channel, CK49. So, uh, yeah, you can catch the rest of it there um, or, or watch it back or whatever. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, locals. Locals have returned. Uh, was this... This was the second weekend that they were Second weekend should eligible. be. I, I think uh, theoretically they unlocked locals for May 1st, but I don't think anybody had any. I don't really know of any seasons? being run. Wait, no, no. Yeah, there, was, yeah, there, there might was have been one or two. I just don't know. Um, them. <laughs> there, was, there was the one at the, the Portland Premier Challenge down in uh, after the okay, regional. True. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that one, yeah. That one counts, yeah. Uh, like there was a few more. Was, I definitely uh, heard of some. Yeah, May 6th weekend was Portland, so that's why there was less focus on locals is because there was a major. Okay. But yeah, they, it felt like uh, they were being run all over the uh, the country this weekend. Uh, you know, some places more concentrated than others. Four premier challenges being run at, uh, in Ohio. Uh, it was a group effort between four uh, tournament organizers, which sounds really awesome. Like if I was, uh, you know, chasing a world's invader day too, I definitely would have attended. It seems just like a really good value uh, for your weekend. And uh, we do actually have two people that ended up attending. Uh, John, I believe you just commentated. You didn't end up playing at all. Uh, actually, they only comment. Uh, they only streamed two of the four, so they were in the morning. So I casted those ones, and then I played in the afternoon ones. I didn't get any CP, so gotcha, that's gotcha. you know, that's the Midwest Classic. It's a top eight cut, top four CP. True, true. We get to uh, talk about that. They didn't. They did not change the kickers, so you know that's we, uh, lovely. We'd love to see it. That that is actually a good thing to bring back up. We can talk about that. <laughs> then uh, also Ashton uh, attended, and I believe knocked out his two finishes right off the bat. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. They they had like a uh, go to go to three, get one free, which is like a really cool deal. Again, they're like super incentivizing. Uh, go to all four of them, you know, support the local scene. So like at the start of it, I was like, oh yeah, I'll go to all four of them. So I prepaid for all four of the events, and then I won the first two. And I'm sitting there like, I don't have any reason to play, but I already paid. So yeah, so I ended up winning the first two and played in the next two with fun teams. So nice, nice. Um. Well, at least you uh, lock up that 60 CP. I mean, that's like a pretty solid earning and uh, don't have to worry about that for the rest of uh, whatever. Um, I don't actually know how much CP you're at right now. Uh, are you like in stage two games? I can't even, I haven't uh, I, I have kind of like taken this year off, being a little chill with it. It's been very nice, actually, for the mentality with the game. It's The day two oh, raises yeah. a whole other you know, you know, conversation. It is but uh, right at the moment with the IC stuff in, which it's like, hasn't been updated i don't know why i'm at 500 flat but at the moment it's showing like 440 because i don't i don't know where my ic points are mm, okay oh you have like 60 from an ic you had like a decent run uh yeah i got two two that were top oh, yeah, uh, 128 your on one was good right yeah yeah yeah, yeah top 128 with that weird hip out on team Hell so yeah uh, it's yeah they're not in my account yet so okay okay um, okay, well, anyways, uh, so yeah, there was, like, four being held over, uh, in Ohio. There was also, um, like, at least one in, uh, California. Oh, I didn't grab that. Uh, there was also one in Florida, um, and I believe both of those events were probably around this, well, I think the California one was a little bigger than the Windmills ones. I think the Florida one was about comparable size, and right now, there is a tournament happening in the, um, Tri-state area. I True. Yeah, that, that's crazy. I just saw that. Yeah. Literally happening right now. You can go follow it live with <laughs> updates Monday. from oh. Gang Gang. 
Yeah, Justin Tang tweeted about that. Said Wolf is there. I'm just like, yeah, wow. why is Wolf at a Monday premiere challenge? I mean, That's maybe it's crazy. well. I mean, his job is this, right? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that no, makes sense no, to me. No disrespect. Like, I just like it's just so funny because uh, mm-hmm. kind of like what I was mentioning with earlier is like with Ashton is like I, I believe Wolf has a world's invite, and I don't know if he's chasing day two. He definitely could make it. So you know, I mean, he's got that Wolf factor. So. Anyways, Wolf is yeah. in the day two race in that he has like got some crazy regional finishes and then has nothing else. Didn't go to either IC and so he's just like so far behind. Even though he's like caught like four regionals, it's it's kind of silly. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like yeah, he's like three hundred points back and he's gonna have to make that up. But if there's anyone that could like randomly win in Rats, you know, it's him. So that's true. It's the world champ true. difference, right? Like right, like we, we joke when we talk that? about. I'm sure we'll talk more about the day two race, like leading up to NAIC when it's like very fun to speculate about who's going to, uh, like who's going to jump whom. But there's always one person who randomly went to internet and gets 500 points it's and jumps Paul right Chua. into the day it's two race. Paul Chua, okay? It's it's usually Paul no, no, Chua, but Paul Chua, already did it. Paul Chua bomb happened early. <laughs> yeah, um, it did so, happen early. Premature, premature. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at someone who might win internet and and you know do that, it's Wolf is like a pretty good bet. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, bringing it back to locals, though, again, well, yeah, we'll talk about the day two race more uh, when it's uh, when there's more to talk about with it. Anyways, um, uh, so yeah, you guys had your uh, your four premier challenges. Uh, some of them were streamed. John was commentating, um, and yeah, I just kind of want to ask, like, generally, like, what was it like uh, getting back to locals? Were you guys excited? Mm. You want to go first? You can go first. Like All this. right. Uh, well, honestly, I did not know how much I missed locals like i was like oh i you know we got locals back i'll go i'll maybe get some points i'll do whatever uh the vibe at locals is just so great like me seeing people that either you've known for years and you're seeing them again you know you're like wow i i only see you at regionals uh now we, we actually get a chance to you know have these time between rounds and have this like make a connection with your local community it's very cool um and then also i think there were like four or five people i had met at regionals scarlet violet regionals and i had you know, talked to them and known they were in Ohio and I actually would like see them at our locals. And I was like, that's really cool to like make that connection and actually see the people show up and see everyone start coming together again. It was, it was very refreshing. Yeah. I think uh, pretty much exactly what Ashton is saying. I think regionals nowadays is like a huge event. There's like hundreds of people there. The chance that anyone is seeking you out and like from your local scene, you're not probably going to see them again until like another regional, but with a local scene, you're talking about like maybe a smaller group of people, maybe 15 to 20 or so, that maybe you can make a real connection with be like, oh yeah, I did meet you at that one regional, and now I know you live in my area, and now I know that I can like attempt to prepare for you at a local. So that's the thing about <laughs> locals, right? Yeah. At the smaller size, it's a lot different prep, I think. Uh, it also depends on like the format. For example, our, our quadruple header was all best of one Swiss, best of three cut. So... The format is different, too, compared to regionals, where you're just preparing for general field stuff. Like, you're talking about, I need a Dondoza matchup. I need a uh, balance matchup. I need a so-and-so, so-and-so. What but about, for, region- uh, or for locals... Oh, there were still sheets, yeah. The, okay, the team sheets. sheets were open, yeah. Yeah. Uh, open sheet, best of one. Really interesting format, because it really just, like, forces you to be able to... Like, I guess the best way I could put it is, like, it helps you build your ability to synthesize the information from their sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, because at, at locals also you play the same people over and over again, right? Mm-hmm. You don't really get that variability of a regionals. So by the end of the fourth tournament, I think Jake had played Ashen like twice, maybe, maybe once only. I don't know. One of those two. Yeah. I remember he played you once in Swiss and then once in Cut, and he lost you in Cut or something, or yep. lost you in both, something like that. Um, but he like me and Nails played like four times across that whole scenario, and I only played in two tours, like. <laughs> so at that point it's just like you can kind of get a feel of like what are people bringing to the local scene like what are they comfortable with how do they play how do i synthesize their information to help me with that and i think that is really good uh prep for like an actual regional event even though you may not be playing those people again they're like helping you get better at the game just by getting you more reps consistently like consistently facing the same thing over and over again getting your lines developed better um and that's Definitely, like, something that I think you can't get at a regional level of tournament. Like, it's really hard to go to regionals and be like, what did I do wrong? Like, how can I improve my performance without going to, like, every single one? Which, you know, drains the wallet. Yeah, I want to say it was really funny. Uh, 
because there was time between the tournaments, I know some people, especially Nails too, used like a different team every Premier Challenge. And I know there was also a one guy who he was like making adaptations to what people had awesome. between the Premier Challenges. <laughs> it was it was such a very interesting like live, you know, team building exercise, I guess you could call it. Yeah. yeah. And then of course you have like Jake White, who literally just rolled up the same team four times and like cut every single one except for the third one, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Yeah. It just goes to show that being consistent or like making small adaptations can really help like refine your team over time and just make it better. And that's like something that you could probably get only at like a quadruple header. I think most of the other ones that we're going to talk about or like have been talking about are like standalone events, but surely you'll see like those TOs organize events again in June before ending IC, and then you'll probably get a chance to experience that scene again. So. Um, I think there's a lot of double headers. I feel like that's pretty common. A lot of TOs work together to see if they can get people from out of town to show up. I mean, Ohio is obviously uh, very special, but um, mm -hmm. I know even down in Texas, we have a double header in Houston next weekend. Uh, just because, again, like if it's you, venues, right? if like, you, isn't that the what? Main, isn't that the main like plus is that like you know they they can book a venue like together because I know that yeah. like finding a venue is mm -hmm. one of the biggest hurdles for hosting an, an event. Um, yep, but also like if you want to get people to come from out of town, um, again, like Texas does not have a ton of locals. Houston's the only one we have, as far as we know, uh, and it's really hard for like someone like me to justify, or most people in Austin, to justify driving four hours to go to a local. Um, if there's two locals in a weekend, then all of a sudden it's a lot easier to justify it and stay in overnight. Um, in this case, it's not even the same venue; it's just the same weekend. Um, in which case, you can play five rounds with your team get a feel for what it what's what it's doing well what it's doing poorly maybe what other people are running make adjustments that night and then run it back the next day is uh pretty cool yeah i uh i think that the the most important things with like locals coming back um or i, I got one thing i want to talk about is like is numbers is it's, it's kind of funny you guys were talking about the, you know the top eight uh cut top four cp that's one thing uh, and so this kind of ties into Adi's point saying like, you know, hosting these double headers, these quadruple headers is going to get more people to come uh, because you do want to hit certain thresholds. Um, even this quadruple header was still struggling to hit the big number, which is, I think, like 19 plus. I can't remember. Um, you need 17 uh, to have a top eight and 24 to have top eight CP. Yep, oh, yep. so 24, so, so 25 is the big, 24 is the big number or 25? 24 is the big 24, number. 24. For, for your division, you, we did have 24 players on the second PC, but it was split between 21 masters and three non-masters. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. although honestly, if you ask me, you, you should just consider the masters because they were beating the crap out of people. Okay. Like yeah. legit. The, they were th like, they're, they're like 3 0 2 one, like the whole weekend. And I, we'll get into that, I suppose later. Oh, um, I, I mean, I can, I can tell a story about that if we're going to talk about that, uh, which is, um, so Toronto, when I lived in Toronto, is notorious for having really, really strong uh, juniors and seniors. I mean, everyone knows uh, JMR, who is the player who's de dominating the juniors division for a long time uh, and, and is from Toronto, now a senior. Um, but we also had a couple others that people did not know about. And I think Nails has talked about in one of the like thumbnails for Tub Takes, uh, one of the, uh, the seniors that he had to play back in the day and how he nearly lost to him. But... Um, before Toronto Regionals, there was a Premier Challenge. And um, that's, that's used to be the, always the case is that the Friday before a Regional, there'd be a Premier Challenge that evening. And then Monday, or so Sunday the next day, there'd be a Mid-Season Showdown, which is a, like an elevated Premier Challenge almost, um, a different type of local. And so um, we, I, I lived in Toronto. I went to the Friday Premier Challenge along with some friends who showed up really early. Those were usually more like locals because people didn't show up to Regionals that far ahead of time. Um, like 4 p.m. before I had, and then if they did, they didn't always want to actually play. So, you know, it was like a 15, 20 person event, something like that. Um, and I'm 3 1, it's five rounds, uh, or 2 1, I'm five, it's five rounds, and I play against a senior who is 3 0. The way it works, um, which is going to lead into what John is talking about, uh, is that if you are playing, if you are a senior and you've played all the juniors and seniors already, you get paired up with, uh, you always get the paired up, essentially. And so if you're a senior who's 3-0, you're probably going to be playing a master who is 2-1. Um, does make a lot of sense. And so I played the 3-0 senior uh, and lost. He just outplayed me. This is, um, what was his name? Um, I forget. But uh, uh, he, he absolutely bodied me. I was like, oh, man, like now I'm 2-2. I'm probably not going to make cut. Uh, and the next round he plays my friend Terry Hong, um, who is also 3-1. 
uh, and he beats Terry Honk. Uh, and so this this senior goes or this junior goes five zero at the pre Toronto Regional Premier Challenge. Um, and because both Terry and I had a five zero on our resistance, we were the two XQs that bubbled into Top Cut. Uh, so amazing, play, amazing. Playing juniors is actually really really good for your resistance, and so it is really fun uh, to have them. But it does also mess with the numbers sometimes in terms of rounds and and uh, people who make cut. It does mean that like you could have events that should hit the cutoff for top eight, but don't because there's a junior or senior. Um, and then a, an X1 player misses top cut, which is also really awkward. Uh, so, you know, it does yeah, kind of mess with the numbers. I think we did have that happen either in the first one or the second one where an X1 missed cut. I think it was the first one. It happened what? twice, actually. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily the, was the junior or senior being present in the standings, but definitely, like... The the juniors were like tearing stuff like tearing stuff apart. I think uh, if you go back to the VOD, I think it's still up, and you watch a Joe Joe Ugarte versus Hira. I don't remember her last name. Fitzgerald, I think, is what it is. It's like it comes down to the wire, and I'm over here in the casting booth, and I'm like, whoa, okay. Um, he does have to call like this specific turn right, and if he doesn't, he's gonna lose the game, and then he ends up winning off of like some miraculous calc, which maybe we'll get to wink oh. wink nudge nudge uh, uh uh anyway so i think your juniors and seniors they are also like the people who are looking to you as like a role model and trying to figure out how to improve in the game even if they're already like good for the division so it pays to like you know interact with them and help them out and like treat them as an actual point and not just be like oh yeah it's a junior it's a senior i'm just gonna just gonna do my flow chart and they're gonna lose it's like no 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 no. They, they have their own ideas but the thing is that unlike me and you masters we kind of can get each other's head you can't do that to a junior or senior mm -hmm. they're operating on a different level like a level way simpler and purer than ours I do so love they, that. they they, they don't, don't the they don't out. get predicted they don't know there the is no out. predicting <laughs> there is no predicting the junior or senior play yeah, yeah. They, they don't second guess I heard from David. I didn't see this. I wish I did. He said he played, I, th I believe it was the junior, because it was a family of uh, three yeah, siblings, yeah. Um, but he played the youngest one, and he says uh, he had a sash Chen Pao, and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, it was crazy. Turn one, she clicked Fissure into my Chen Pao, and it hit, and he's like, man, that was a crazy play. I, I don't know why she did that. And then he's like, yeah, and then turn two, she clicked Fissure into my Chen Pao again, even though it was one HP, and it hit, and I was like, what a <laughs> weird flex. Like <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> and it worked. It totally worked, you know. But David, I, know, I think he ended up winning that. But he's like, yeah, he she hit two fissures into my Chen Pao for like some weird reason is what she went for. But well, she unpredictable. Knew the she knew the seat. She knew True. the seat. And, and, and you, you got to cover for the switch. Really. If there was if there was a switch, that was just a free Oko. True. 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 It's true. Um, was the strong senior from Toronto, Daravon? No, because Daravon was a master at this point. He is like a college student now. He's old. Dang, people um, are getting old now, huh? So, Ooh, I, know. I didn't finish my point about the uh, the numbers, though, which, um, which yeah, I, I don't, actually don't know if there's a good fix for it for the um, the top eight cut, top four CP, unfortunately. Um, I, I feel like it, it's nice that you at least get your play-in game, you know? Like, at the, at the very least, you get to... Uh, um, have one more match to decide if you're earning championship points or not. But mm. uh, it, it's also at the same time, like, I know that Premier Challenges aren't this huge source of points, but, for example, if you have a 17-person tournament, which would grant you a top eight cut, are you really giving championship points to half the entrance? I mean, I guess maybe. Maybe that's justified. I don't know. But it's one thing. I got the solution. What's I got like, the solution. It's part of my long list of things that I need that I could have fixed the circuit with. Is it championship points by record? It is no, no, no. For locals, oh. no top cut. Top cut's stupid at locals. Oh, but, um, okay. Hold on. He's going crazy. Let's hear it. <laughs> no, okay. So let instead him, of top cut, him, add an extra thing. round. Locals are for like everyone who attends, right? And you don't need to. It's just two problems with top cut at locals. The first is that um, you have people who go five zero and then missed points altogether, which is kind of silly. Um, and the second thing is that uh, these are supposed to be shorter events. They don't need to go on for eight rounds. Um, and so. Instead, just make it, like, go for five or six rounds so that um, everyone gets to play more Pokemon. The entire point is to let people in your local community play Pokemon, even if they aren't incredibly good, even if they aren't going to consistently top cut. 
Uh, and then it also solves the problem of uh, people getting more like this like weird amount of points because of this like randomness and top cut at a 17 player event. So six rounds um, Swiss just end it. Yeah, so 17 player event, six rounds of Swiss just end it, give points by record. I'm kind of down. I like and that. It is it is interesting that you bring that up because I think <laughs> uh, the TOs at the Ohio uh, quadruple header, we were kind of like making jokes, but apparently on the uh, other side, the organizer side, you are allowed to set a player cap on your locals when you sanction them. And they were talking about, we just need to cap them so that everybody always gets CP and that cap would be four, which is also <laughs> the minimum required to run a tournament in the first place. So that they were talking about a theoretical sanctioned tournament in which it's just a cap of four and everybody gets CP and there's no top cut because so it's only is, four people. What is second place at a regional again? 160? Uh, 160? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, like, I'm looking at this message from the general ledger. Why does second place get 16 CP? Uh, the understand the drop from 30. And like when you think about it, it's like, oh, yeah, that's just 14 points. But like when you look at it, like the ratio, like that would be the equivalent of a regional win giving 300 and then second place getting 160. Like it is just uh, yeah. like, it is kind of funny how much like like it feels like for a premier challenge, because uh, I think top four is 12. So you're playing top four is four. Yeah. You're going from 12 to 16. Like it, it, it is basically win or cut. When it comes to region uh, premier challenges, yeah. like there there is no other uh, distinction. Um, uh, it yeah. it sucks too. Like um, I remember back in Moon series, they did something a little different. They had this is twenty nineteen. Uh, they had something a little different where they said you have to get two premier challenge finishes per like little three month period, um, and then you had like a BFL of six or eight. I forget which one um, because there were three or four periods in the year. Uh, and that meant that you had to get those finishes in that amount of time. And I had like two second place finishes really easily. And then I went to like five more premier challenges and lost in finals in every single one. And it sucks so much to go to a premier challenge saying to get anything out of this, I have to win the event. Um, and if it was like 20 and 16, like it was in 2018, I think that was the, the, the amount of points that they gave out. Then it's like, not so bad. It's like, ah, I'm losing four championship points. Um, or you could elevate the number of points the second place gets to 20, which is really what it should be. Uh, but Which they, yeah, they, they, like, they used to have one of those systems. They don't have that system anymore right now. Yeah. Uh, the elevated PC yeah. or elevated MSS system. We, we, um, Lucas we, said we he got two top fours, though. and it's less than one win. Um, yeah, even like getting a second place in a top four is less than a win, which is just very, very silly. Yeah. We just need elevated events to be brought back across the board. Uh, because... I, I think they probably should just look at balancing the, the payouts in general across events now that you know locals are back. You want to make sure that you're providing incentive for people to come back and play more, even after their best finish limit gets filled. Because, like, I mean, from my perspective, I didn't get any CP. So, to me, technically, I wasted my weekend. Mm -hmm. But, like, I didn't really. Like, I'm playing this game for fun, right? But for those of you who are trying to, like, pursue points and, like, optimize your gain, it's, like, really disheartening to get top four twice and then be like, I have to just beat someone in top four now to actually get any points. Like, I need to make finals. Which is a bit of a hard ask if you're going to a stacked region, which, unsurprisingly, uh, the Midwest area has a lot of strong players. Uh, we have Ashton Nails, uh, Luca, you know, uh, my, myself, but I don't actually play that often. Okay. Uh, the juniors. But, okay. But not Alex. Alex. Oh, yeah. He's not a strong player. No, not Alex. Not Alex. He didn't show up. He doesn't count. <laughs> Same with a lot of the other Indiana locals. I can kind of get it, though. Like, it, it's a far drive for a lot of the Indiana people, but. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is the local, like RTO held it, the one in four win anyway. But um, yeah, we are we are having a lot of like resurgence, which back in the old days, Indiana didn't used to have that many tournaments at all. Or if we did, it would be like eight people. So it is really nice to see like the kind of turnaround on that where I can go to an event and be like, oh, there's like 15 to 20 people now. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then they'll, they'll all be skilled in some way, shape or form. I'll be like, yeah, this is this is fun now. That is I really the, enjoy it. That is something that's can still be a concern. I, I think it happened at least with one of the locals is just not getting enough players to technically fire off. I believe it is eight players in the division minimum for, uh, what is it, Adi? You're shaking your head. It's, it's four I think total. it's four, yeah. Oh, four really? You can have a, yeah. you can have a premier challenge with two masters, a junior and a senior, and that will fire. Uh, and everyone gets points. I think everyone it used to be eight, it used to be eight at some point, but I think they reduced it down to four. I think they changed yeah. it in 2019 or 2020. Okay. Yeah, something like that. 
Okay, okay. So then you probably don't need to worry too much about the minimum, considering that. Uh, well, so Carson Confer told me that there was a Oklahoma Premier Challenge on a Thursday that only got two people. So sometimes <laughs> I you know, do. But wow. he said that. I mean, he said that honestly. If he went, and he, you know, just I guess it still wouldn't have worked out. But he just needed to bring one person. <laughs> just, just, just. It's just time. Bring it's your, time to and just bring your yeah, yeah, but what is worth? Back in the day when the <laughs> limit was eight, people would just get, you know, their parents to sign up. They're yep. like, I know Gina signed up for some to get to, to kickers. Like, uh, it's just like, you know, you just bring whoever you can. Um, Man, I feel like it's only been like three or four episodes since I told this story, so I'll keep it short. But like, there was one local that we entered in, Gina, and she was using her in-game team. And I posted the screenshot of her team sheet on Twitter. And somehow that screenshot ended up in the background of a wolf video. I don't, I still don't remember why why wolf had gina's team sheet in the background it was just like lit litten at fiery mz serena at grassy mz comfy at fairy mz like it was just 60 moves and it was just like i just don't remember why that was there i think he was just talking about team sheets or something <laughs> like not like open team sheet but like anyway it was nah, just, i don't know just silly um i want to talk a little bit about this um this local that was held in uh la or you know in the california area i don't know man i'm bad at geography i i, I don't know where hartford is you know i was learning today that it's like close to new york or something so that <laughs> that's news to me um but gavin went to this one and i know where gavin lives kind of so i'm gonna say this one's in california we'll start with that it's <laughs> a um, good guess uh, yeah. and so uh and gavin ended up taking it all and winning it uh over like if you look at this this is a 32 player tournament and these are all players that i like i feel like i've seen in regional cuts this season and so it's just like oh wow holy this is such a stacked local um like they had uh enrique grimaldo geo uh aaron brock got like top four at san diego i believe um alan martinez um and then there's cortex uh wolf was there and then uh and grant weldon um like this is just so many people Man, nobody, nobody gonna give me any, not even a hmm. little laugh for the, the wolf joke. Damn. I thought you were serious. I was like, wolf's everywhere now. Like, he's yeah, there. I was like, wait, I, he could have been there. Yeah, the I, one I, linked it. Come on, no, guys, open, <laughs> open the link. It's in the doc. It, it's just no. I, I mean, refuse, I wolf, wolf, it, the locals are so stacked. He just didn't make cut. You know, like, <laughs> makes sense to me. No, no, no. He's no. uh, he's seventh place. He's uh, Arnie Wolf, man. Oh, oh okay. it's the other wolf. It's the other wolf. Okay. Okay, that's funny. Um, something interesting about this PC though, it has a lot larger turnout than some of the other ones that have been firing. But I think that's because the um the area where this is being held, the LA area, or maybe it's like California in general, they've been kind of holding their grassroots tours for a while now since uh Scarlet Violet came out, and you know that goes a long way of retaining player interest, mm -hmm. which I kind of wish we did over here. I mean, we had a couple in Indiana, but not not like to the extent that. Mm -hmm. California does it all the time. Uh, they do it more frequently. Um, and that's like not even for points. And people still come out and just have a good time. So, yeah, really, if you if you think you have like uh, enough people to start a scene and you know you've got like a TO in the area, they can even be like a TCG TO, but they can learn how to do VG. That's one of our Indiana um, judges too. Um, then you can kind of start that, that ball rolling and then you can actually have like some local scene for yourself and start building that up. Um, and to have like large tournaments like this, where it's like, oh, 32 people, but there's like a large chunk of them are like really good. It can lead to really good practice if you're just looking to get in good sets against like strong players. Um, yeah, you're probably gonna get you know beaten down a couple times. That's okay. You, you get better after every time you get beaten down, you know. Uh, and that's that's kind of how it is at local events. Is that you kind of figure out who is the the strong, who is like the developing. And then, like, you use that to kind of keep growing yourself and making yourself better oh, to prepare. I thought you used it to counter team the, the good players. Oh, you can do that too. You gotta figure I'm not out saying you can't do that. But you bit. do have to figure out if they're running the same thing because you can't counter team people like Nails. He's running four different teams every <laughs> every single like set. So, Ashton, you know. do you remember yep. when uh, John and I invaded your locals that one time? Uh, it was like in 2019, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah yeah okay i think I, I think i do yeah oh yeah uh-huh uh -huh. i remember uh yeah john and i went to a, a concert uh it, I, was, I was taking him to see a, a band that i liked and that was performing in ohio and i was like there's also these locals there like you want to just like go to the concert and then go to the locals and i remember i wanted to walk in as late as possible because when i when we did walk in you jokingly said to uh 
to PV like, oh, I need to change my team sheet. Like, cause he's oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that was around a time where like we both kind of knew what we were both running, you yeah. know. So I'm I'm sure at the time I was just like. Oh well, I shoot. I wasn't prepping for this at all because like locals you, are so you, different. You, yeah, locals are so different. You've got uh, you really do know what your local people are running, um, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's very interesting. It wasn't it wasn't so I guess set in stone is a good way to put it this time. You know, because like I didn't know a lot of the local people, but there were still things along the lines of like, all right, I feel like I was seeing people were making adjustments to myself already. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't. I'm not going to say Nails did it fully on purpose for me, but he had, like, a very similar team to me with every Pokemon having, like, eight more speed EVs and <laughs> fight and fighting moves everywhere. The and speed like, creep, baby. Okay, yeah. He was he was running, like, a, a King Gambit team similar to what Luca and I have been running, mm -hmm. except he had speed on his King Gambit, and he had fighting moves, like, everywhere. I was like, this is a little suspicious. I don't know. So I never asked him, but it feels like I was a little behind the curve on... You know, making well, those yeah. local kind of No, I, I believe it. Yeah, it speed is, on the it King Gambit. If you watch the team report, he always had speed on the King Gambit. So that one's not too surprising. Fighting moves, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was like yeah. Drain Punch Palafin and like a fighting move on no, the D Knight. Been, he's been I was running like, that. He okay. has been. He running did have that. Drain Punch Palafin at EUIC as well. So oh, yeah, okay. I think he just really respected King Gambit. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. He just knows King Gambit's in the pool and he knows that good players are running it. So probably he's switching to the ones that have better matchup spread against that, that Pokemon. Don't get me wrong, uh, though. Nails would definitely be the type of person to prepare for the local meta. He, he, if he yeah. were going, he would make sure that he uh, picked a team that was strong into at least what he thought you might run. Um, anyways, um, but yeah, I, I don't really care to talk too much about the teams. A lot of the, I mean, there's some interesting teams here. There's like people running yeah. stuff that they're comfortable. I do, with. I, I do think going back to the whole like counter team, like you can know what your your locals are playing kind of idea. It's really hard to get a sense of like what teams are actually good versus what teams are like specifically designed to beat the local meta. Um, so I think like in terms of, can you really learn a whole lot in terms of like meta snapshot from these tournaments? The answer is probably a no, but it will help you, like I said, refine the team you're currently using against those specific matchups. So like if you run into balance at your local, and you happen to do okay into it with your current team, then you're like, okay, that means I'm pretty good into balance. Mm -hmm. But if they come back in like round five of the second one and they like beat you clean off your pants and they have a deadline that you did not prepare for, then it's like, oh, now I have to consider that line too. So it's just like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really for the, the purpose of building. It's more for the purpose of refining is my, is my sense there. And it looks Very like true. Nails is confirming that he built all his teams pre, pre, uh, event so makes sense. Well, like I, I wouldn't spend time event, building so, the team. I mean, what? Of course, he built them before the event, John. <laughs> he built it during round three of the first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. No, he uh, said literally on Friday he just built them all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the two things that I want to touch on that, uh, like before we move away from locals is one, um, we're talking about all these like you know refining serious teams and stuff like that, but I also miss locals, uh, for running things that I didn't think were at the regional level. Uh, it wasn't even just like about oh, yeah. finding something that like you know i wanted to find out. like sometimes it was about like you know hey this is a really stupid idea but maybe it's good <laughs> enough let's use maybe. it to, at a low stakes tournament but uh, sometimes it was just like i want to meme i want like i have this funny idea that could definitely win a 16 person tournament but definitely could not win 600 plus and so like why not do something dumb uh and you you, you can't like do that at the local level or no you, you i mean you can't do it oh, you can't do it at the uh the regional level because um you're spending 70 dollars traveling across the country and you have to give it your all to win that one you know if, if you're trying to qualify for worlds or go for day two or try to earn your money back in prize money so it, it just it, it's so much nicer to be able to use those sillier teams those uh untested ideas in a somewhat real setting you know you keep pointing yeah. at Ashton, John. You, you should you should ask Ashton about that. <laughs> well, uh, so I, after I after I won the first two on the on the first two days of the locals, I uh, I was sitting there and I was like, what do I want to use? Because again, I can't even if I win, I get nothing like yeah. points wise. So I was like, what do I want to do that would be enjoyable but like serious enough? You know, not not just locking in like six Pokemon I caught overnight. Um, and I was I was just looking in my box and I was like, you know what? It's dead on sparse time. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, I, again, we're not going into it like super, super detailed, but uh, 
almost cut with it. My my two losses were like a crit and like a rock slide hit that I, I needed to dodge one of like six rock slides. So it was close. He almost did it, but uh, it was it was enjoyable. Is uh, definitely the moral of the story. So yeah. exactly, and that, that you can't do that if you were attending a regional. You know, I also you did know. run a uh, fun team in the second PC I played at, featuring uh, Dozo List Tatsu. Let's go. Uh, and I went two and two, which was, you know, probably better than I was actually expecting because the team is not actually that good. Honestly, uh, that, that is actually probably a little crazier than John would get credit for. It's like, we've seen Dozo plenty. We've seen Solo Dozo. We've seen Dozo Tots, but like, oh, it's Storm Drain Tots. But you never see the Solo Tots. You never just see just the, the little sushi guy. Yeah, like, nobody really. ever runs just that yeah. thing. Nah, he was impressive. I, I was pretty impressed by Tatsugiri's damage output and general bulk. Now, I don't think you can make it do everything, but, like, it was a fun mod. I mean, Muddy Water is a good move if you hit, which I didn't miss, which probably contributed to my 2-2. Two -two. Um, but, yeah, clicking Surf, also phenomenal. Like, if Surf had the same amount of immunities as Earthquake did, then you would probably see it used a lot more, because it also gets weather boosted. But... There's not many water immune Pokemon right now, mm -hmm. and the ones that are aren't really that good. The other thing about uh, Tots so. is like I think Tots has the kit to be a very respectable Pokemon. It's got like you know nasty plot, a lot of good uh, support moves like Taunt and stuff. Um, but it's just like casually weak to Flutterbane, which is just like how do I I, I can't yep. justify having can't a fifth. Like, I can't have a fifth yep. fairy weakness on my team. I've already <laughs> got four in a Ting Lu, like you know, and then uh, it's also quadruple week to freeze dry like uh, the bundle and flutter do invalidate a lot of stuff yeah it is it is a it is also terra hog like in order to get around those bad matchups you basically have to tear into like a steel type fire type mm -hmm. um but once it does do that it is like really really good at beating those i think it would a be a really fire. awesome water type if it was again like a a regional dex that didn't have pokemon with a national dex level of <laughs> pokemon that had uh, a yeah. 570 bst and were ridiculously overpowered yeah yeah we little, went right back little. to a restricted meta <laughs> a little bit a little bit I'm, yeah, I mean, we were just joking about uh, running Storm Drain Tatsugiri with Terra Fairy to be Dozo back in Series 1 when that was the biggest threat. So, like, yeah. when, when the Dozo is the best Pokemon in the format, then yeah, Tatsugiri is absolutely somewhat viable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Palafin, also, for what it's worth, just stopping Palafin. And Palafin. Uh, Rain was like, yeah, Rain was probably, like, honestly, I think if we kept playing Series 1, I think you would see Storm Drain Tatsugiri as like a legitimate option. Um, but speaking of Surf Spam, uh, there was a premier challenge in England that was won by Surfman, by won by Rashan, um, who I think oh, recently yeah. moved. To oh yeah, do you got a link for that uh, one? I, I thought somebody posted something. Yeah, earlier. probably. I got, I got you. All right, yeah, like send it in the chat or something, or I'll grab it. Or yeah, okay, I got it. I just posted a group DM. Um, so oh, Rashan yeah. is from the US, right? He's like, he he he's a lot like a really old head. Um, uh, yeah, he's super old in the in the scene. Uh, but <laughs> I only I only know old. I only know him as far back as when he was Canadian. So I don't actually know what nationality oh. is. <laughs> if he's here, he can specify. Canada. But, uh, yeah, I right. I only know so far back as he's from Canada. Yeah. But Wait, yeah, surf spam out? still still alive in Ireland. Uh, somewhere in England, Portsmouth. Um, you can see any points there? Oh, it says UK and Ireland. Okay. I see um, Jamie Boy with that car. Yeah, that's car. That's something. But see, this is this kind of stuff that you get at the local levels. This boy, it's allowed to cook. You know, just, just yeah. Uh, this stuff. is what Jamie Boy would bring to like. A yeah, he would. He would. He would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's crazy enough to bring car. I missed that. Then again, Zach emerging also brought car. I, so I was gonna say it almost. Know. Almost made day two. I, <laughs> almost. It was there. I it was it. just there. But hey, I gotta, I gotta be like, it's a car. It's quad week to ground. It reminds me of that meme that was posted by uh, Professor Shroomish, where you send out a quad week to ground mon, and then it dies because they get EQ'd. Yeah, yeah, that one about Glamora. That was a good meme. <laughs> that Glamora, yeah. Amazing meme. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, shout out to Zach. Incredible memer. Um, so... Oh, and this one did... It looks like, yeah, it was seven masters, one senior player, so it was actually really small. Um, so yeah, the... John kind of touched on this at the beginning, and this is the last thing I want to mention for locals, is just, like, the... Of course, the, the, the scene is just so much, like, more concentrated, and so, like, yeah, you get to hang out with the um, the players that, you know, are at your local level that you don't get to spend as much time with at regionals. But also, there's just, like, certain people, like... Like, when I'm traveling to regionals, you know, there's... 
even some of my friends, you know, I, I, at this point I've been in the scene so long, there's so many people I know that, like, I don't get to spend a ton of time with. Like, even, like, my main friend group uh, could be, like, too big where, like, we have to, like, you know, we can't even all go to dinner together. We have to split up. But, like, uh, when, you know, the you're at the local level, just between rounds, you get to just hang out with all these people. It, it is such, like, a, a chill vibe, especially because there isn't, like, a ton on the line. So you get to just talk about, like, you know, I don't know, just anything. Mons, not mons, you know, yeah. just... It, you get to spend a lot more time with your friends in a uh, a much different setting than the regional level, where it's like, you know, I, especially, the, you know, like, if your friend loses, like, a really tough set at the regional, they're, like, gonna go sulk in a corner or something. I've definitely <laughs> been that guy before, where it's like, you know, if you lost at the local, you're just like, oh my god, dude, John was running the stupidest shit. Listen to this. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Uh, and so I just, I really miss that about locals and love that, so I'm so happy to see them uh, returning. Yeah, you should tell us when Chicago locals are so we can go there. Uh, I think there was one out in Rockford, which is not exactly Chicago. I think Chicago's got mm. two upcoming. Um, but I will be attending. I'm, I'm not attending locals this season. I've got nothing to nothing to do. Um, so while I do miss them, I just, you know, I, I definitely went a little too hard this season. That not going to not going to give my personal mm-hmm. soft story here on the um, on the, the podcast. But anyway, um Moving us forward, though, let's talk about uh, Japan Nats now. Um, so, uh, buckle, buckle in, guys. Buckle in. Strap right, in. Yeah. Uh, so, we got a lot to talk about. So, uh, John is going to be helping us doing a bit of uh, translating on what exactly went down. Uh, but uh, the Japan Nats uh, moved on to their next stage today. So, it was um, 450 um, players entering in an online tournament where the top 64 would move on to the live stage they would secure themselves a day one invite whereas the Mm. the the top 64 at the live stage would be competing for day two invites um also korea and And what's that had the same tournament korea also had the same online i know i think pretty much every single tpc region had their relevant equivalent online ladder tour this weekend but specifically korea and japan had issues and the other regions did not is Mm. what i saw Yes. Okay. Um, but Korea had all of their world's invites decided by this online tournament as compared to Japan, which just gave out day one invites and then also invites for a chance to get day two, I think. I'll shut up and let John explain it. Yes. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. All I know is that they were supposed to uh, cut off at top 64 for the people who are going to go to play in the live event, uh, which is happening, I believe, in June sometime. Uh, sometime in June. Usually happens that time anyway. Um, maybe maybe like late May, early June, something like that. Uh, where they would play, I think it's double elimination. Yeah, I, I don't remember. It's it's an elimination of some sort, and then it's best of one for Japan. Very lovely, and uh, they're gonna go until uh, uh, finals, which is then best of three. I think that's Japan's system. Uh, honestly, if you want me to talk about the other TPC regions, Taiwan's is probably the most. Uh, modernized version where they go to a 128 live tournament. It's still double elim, but at least all the matches are best of three. So, like, it's at least okay. Like, sort of the same as what they used to have. Because they did actually have some regionals this year, or this cycle. And then they just, like, walked that right back, and they said, no, you don't want those anymore. Yeah, yeah. You just want these uh, double elim, elim tournaments after you qualify through a ladder, you know? That's, that's cool. Um, but yeah, in terms of that, I think that Japan is, like, live event usually it's a big deal um it's the same like tier event as like an, an international challenge or like an old nationals or back in the day like i had the same very same vibe i've been to one so like it's it's very similar vibe but there's a lot for people to do if you're not part of the main event which is honestly really nice um i kind of wish the current side events worked like that but it's not really the story here anyway uh back to the issues at hand though so japan and korea had issues with their ladder and it was so bad and so many support tickets were being sent in or like inquiries from the player base that japan actually or tpc sent out a message to the japanese player base i think the korean player base also got an equivalent one on their side too but i don't know korean so uh tied up someone who knows korean better than i do uh for that um but one player was um Nice enough to drop basically the whole email in a tweet image, so I ripped it and did my best at giving my giving it a rough translation. Um, I'm not like super fluent or anything, but I think I, I think I like to I say I, I know a thing or two about Japanese grammar and vocab. So 
here's my uh, attempt at yeah so we don't need to read it all but like john if you could give the uh the rundown of like some of them like the the, or the major sure. things that went wrong sure. with the this online qualifier Sure. So the first thing in this thing is the red part was like they're just notifying you and be like a lot of people sent in individual like support tickets, but we're going to arrest you all at the same time because we're getting too many of them. <laughs> the blue part is the the actual parts that are wrong with the tournament. So if you were online at any point during the weekend and you saw these tweets from Japanese players or maybe you saw them being like uh, filtered through some other person saying that, wow, this is terrible, like someone who was doing a, a secondhand account. Basically, they could not see their rating or how many battles they played. They could not back out of the queue once they entered the queue. And they could rematch the same person in a row. So that are, those are like the main three things. They also said something about like the displays aren't the same or whatever. But like this game doesn't do that ever anyway. So like who cares? <laughs> that, that's normal behavior in my opinion. Anyway, uh, so the big ones were you can't back out after you start queuing. So, like, once you got in there, you were locked to playing all your games, pretty much. Unless you, like, turned off your Switch. Yes. Yeah, so which could, some like, people did opt to do. You could disconnect from the internet or something, and it seems like the word got around about that. So, like, a good number of players didn't play the full 20 and were still able mm -hmm. to qualify. But, like, for me personally, if I didn't get, like, a lot of assurance that I could do that, I probably wouldn't risk it. I would be too scared to, like, get myself disqualified. This is my world's qualification on the line. Yeah. Also, so like, um, I think Alcana tweeted saying that he did not have the requisite number of games because it does not show you how many games you played. And so you must yeah, play yeah, like one, have, two, few uh... games, or one of them didn't count. Um, and so yeah, like if they don't show you the number of games, it's also spooky to disconnect. Oh, do I not have the Alcana yeah. tweet? Wow. I think it's I think it's in the doc somewhere. Here it is. Um, okay. But yeah, you needed to have ten battles minimum to even be considered. This person, Alcana, uh, did have or thought he had. 10 battles but nine apparently one, one of those battles didn't count so he ended at nine battles but if he had actually had that last battle count he most definitely would have been in because he went like nine and one or something some ridiculous oh, crazy wow. number so it just goes to show that uh not being able to see how many battles you have counted and not being able to see a rating ah who knew how that would turn out to be a very terrible system for keeping track of if you're qualified or not um and again none of the other regions besides like korea all had this problem Taiwanese players were like fine. Everything worked well on their end. It was just a, basically another GC for them, like and except so, it was ten battles only. As Team Rocket League explains here, the first and third issues are absolutely connected: the uh, forced continued battles and the very common occurrence of rematches were oh. happening because you know you you both get queued instantly at the same time, and so it's very likely that. Especially, you know, imagine if for those that have played in online tournaments, all of us have like, these GCs, you know, if you were like 15 points above somebody and you just lost to them, your scores are going to about equalize. And so then the next game, it's going to see you guys as a really good match. You guys are like about the same rating and then um, it's going to pair you up and it's just going to keep wanting to pair you up. And, and yep. so mm. I saw even in one case, somebody <laughs> tweeted out like, who has this trainer name? Like gg for the best of five like they played each other five times in this <laughs> oh 10 to God. 20 like a, what either a fourth or 50 percent of their games were against the same person five games against one team like against one person like mm -hmm. it's just wow. ridiculous um yeah one thing that's very important to note uh here uh and i think john mentioned that it was um yeah, that he might have uh, misinterpreted was uh, the, the the last section, right? The purple. The purple part, yeah. Go ahead. Um, first of all, let's get to the green part. Okay, go ahead. The green okay. part is talking about how they're going to investigate what caused the bugs. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that it's probably something with the code, uh, <laughs> since you know it didn't happen for anyone else. It just happened for Japan and Korea. Um, but they also say uh, in the purple part, this is the relevant part for like the result. The results of the investigation aren't going to be considered for changing the results of this current competition. The, the results will As stand. Like, the results will stand. They said they might take further action in the green part, but they don't say that they will like null the results or anything. And I think that makes sense if you take a look at it from the, an outside perspective. You don't want to take away top 64 from the people who got it through the system, even though it's broken, mm -hmm. right? 
but you also want to still be able to make uh, reparations to the people who kind of like were super affected by this, like people like uh, Alcana or Umbro, whoever you want to call it, um, people who got mashed several times into another person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we might expect a follow-up email to those players, um, but as far as like what exactly that will be remains to be seen. We might see something like 2015, where it was just like, if you can pay to get to Worlds, then you can play in Worlds, which would be crazy because it's in Japan, so expect to see all the Japanese players there if I did that. I don't think that will actually happen, but just as like an extreme, you know, That's the possible thing is, consequence. Uh, you know, uh, when uh, we were talking to Randy about this, it was like, if they do try to make up in some type of way for this, like run another tournament, even if they're not taking away the results of this tournament, you know, giving more people a chance because they were robbed. Um, when are they going to do it? Like they, they are on a pretty strict timeline from what it seems like, you know, like they, are they going to run it this weekend? Are they like, when are they going to fit yeah, this in? Yeah. Um, the timing is really tight for sure. Um, Japan is, I feel like they've done this in the last few years of running, being run by TPC. They always have a really tight time schedule. I think that's just like a cultural thing too. If you have ever studied in Jap like Japanese culture or have been in Japan at all, you hopefully know that they value like timeliness way more than we do over here in the West. Um, trains are always on time. If they're even like two minutes late, they will have like a huge apology announcement. It's like a real big deal over there. So um in terms of like timeliness and getting back to that hopefully tpc can figure out what what happens there but i mean honestly a redo seems unlikely at this point it's too much to organize and like do that uh mass qualification seems unlikely so i really don't know what they're gonna do but either way i hope they're feeling the heat because i feel like their player base is about fed up by the, like they've always been fed up to be honest but uh they kind of like you know just put up with it. That's kind of the way it goes over there. But I think this might be the nail in the coffin on the way they've been running events um, up to this point, and especially with the you know two steps back idea they've taken this year for whatever reason on all their regions. Um, one last thing I think that I'll mention too is that um, this was like such a big deal that it was reported on like several news outlets uh, in the in the Japanese internet area, like Yahoo News. They use that a lot in Japan. It made Yahoo News. If you make Yahoo News in Japan, it's a huge deal. Like that is incredible. So many people are gonna see that. I think I, I I click on the link and I like scrolled down to like the comment section. You know how like, they have that on the articles. Yeah. I think the first one was like, I don't really know what's going on, but it does seem like a lot of people are getting mad, and this probably shouldn't have happened. Like, <laughs> like that was the first comment, and I was like, oh yeah, I mean, they're yeah, right. They're, they're, they know, dude. They know. Yeah. This is just so, so crazy. Also, thank you uh, to Burns for answering that uh, question from Diamond Dude. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if uh, somebody in call could explain what happened in 2015. But basically, yeah, they weren't granted uh, day one invites to uh, Worlds. And so uh, they just said anybody from Japan can play in day one Worlds. And it was kind of a, a wild thing. Um, I don't know if we'll see that again. Uh, but it, I'm really wondering if they are going to do something about it with how much outrage I saw. Like uh, that that was mostly shown here in the uh the Yuki tweet. Um he just like uh he, he captioned it as like T L, which I assume is like timeline or like uh you know, is a the Twitter of, the Twitter feed, the Twitter feed. Yeah, the feed is a picture of hell. Like everyone is just raging about this turtle. Everyone's so mad. Understandably. Uh oh, John's got the uh, the Yahoo link. Should I open this, John? You can if you want. Gotcha. Um, it, it's pretty basic. Like it covers all the information I just covered, except like being written by another person. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it, it goes on a little longer, but there's like you can see the, like the reactions down here uh, near the bottom, and there's like 281 comments. Yeah. Um, Wait. How supposedly many comments? by other people. 281 comments on a 281. Like a Yahoo News article. On a like, Yahoo that, News article. That does seem like a lot of comments because I feel like most people are going to just look at this and move on. Like you know, so like the fact that it's getting so many comments. Um, yeah. This, uh, um, okay. Who wants a conspiracy yeah. theory? I got go my go top ahead. take go, ready. Go ahead. Yes. All right. Ready. Hey. So, you, you you might remember last time or two times ago, uh, Nails went on this big rant about all the problems that could happen with this sort of structure, um, where like you can you can. Match fix essentially, you can have multiple accounts to queue up with yourself. You can queue up against um, other people and trade wins. You can, if you've already know that you're in top cut, you don't have to like play any more games. Uh, and so you, you 
uh, stop and then people won't face people who are higher rated than them because everyone stopped. All these problems that we talked about. Maluka also had a tweet that described a lot of the same problems. And so it was pretty clear that people in general were aware of all the different structural issues with the uh, the APAC um, or TPC structure of uh, awarding invites. I think that they were like last minute, like we got to change the code for these live competitions to make sure that some of these issues don't happen. Um, and so some of these problems do kind of solve the issues. If you are immediately queued up into another game, you really... Oh, no. Oh, no. The best uh... part of the conspiracy. <laughs> they took I'm him the out. Edge of my seat they here. took him out. Oh, oh, no. He was you right. Are. He was right. There we go. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Audio, God damn it! Back? Okay, my rate was my rate was so good. What, what did okay. you hear? Did you, you hear anything? You, you stopped at the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's gone, guys. Uh, they, we, they got him. They got him. We're too late. He's talking uh, about the rematches. They're the instant cues, right? Okay, audio. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome back. So okay. you you left off when you were talking about the instant cues. Um. Okay. So so essentially, yeah, they were trying to uh, last minute change the code to alleviate some of the issues that Maluka and that Nails and wh whoever uh, brought up and, you know, other people surely have brought up in Japanese or Korean, um, like instant cues stop you from being able to try to match up with your friends more consistently uh, because you have to be on the exact same schedule and you can't really plan it out. You also um, can't stop once you feel like you've qualified. It's an incentive to play all your games. That could definitely be intentional. Uh, not seeing rating. So, uh, prevent you from stopping at certain points and forcing you to play all of your games to make it a little more fair uh, and also stops you from um, again kind of bowing out of the competition when you feel like you're out of it or if you know if you feel like oh I'm, I'm x3 I'm not going to be able to qualify because you see your rating you might intentionally try to boost your friend that was another big concern that we brought up uh, or a second cart using a second cart to try to boost your friend uh, but you have to have similar ratings for that to happen so all these concerns suddenly are alleviated if you can't see your rating and you instant queue and I wonder if that was intentional on their part. And they were like, we got to fix this, but they didn't communicate it and they didn't implement it very well. Um, and I, I don't know how much of this stuff was intentional. I don't know if any of it is intentional, but if you want the uh, the real conspiracy theory, uh, that is, I think that this is a response to some of the uh, issues that could have popped up from this being the qualification structure. Um, and this was like a last minute fix that went wrong. That's that's actually really interesting. That makes so much sense. I feel like you're you're totally right because I I could see how if done better, like that would kind of make it more fair. You know, if they did bypass all of those things, like if they did actually make it so you did play all. Of, like, I don't think you should have to play all your games, but I see how you would think that you know, like the like the event staff or whatever you'd call an online someone running the online tournament. I could see how they'd want you to. So I can see the thought process there, but like. It just feels like every single execution failed, which is kind of sad because it, it feels like we might have been able to actually see like a better online circuit. I don't think the solution is having no online circuit like that, but you know what I mean? Could have at least been better, but then it, it just got worse, which is yeah, disappointing. I do no, I... think that, yeah, I'm going to touch on it too. I think Adi's making a lot of sense here. I just don't think that was ever like the way to go about it because like not being able to see your rating sure that prevents you from like you know saying oh i'm gonna stop here but like, that's like the point of a ladder tour <laughs> the yeah, point yeah. is to find a good place to stop right so well, i think the point is it's supposed to be like a 20 round swiss tournament um oh, okay, that, okay. right and then you just like oh well sure, if you play sure. 20 rounds of swiss surely it'll wrap itself up without having to deal with the venue costs for 450 players uh that's like i think what they were trying to get at with this with the structure um and they just failed miserably yeah, sure. I, I can give you that. So, like, I guess in that sense, then, yeah. I feel like, well, I don't know if they've ever had experience doing something similar to, like, a Players Cup in Japan or TPC-related tournaments. I feel like they have done it, like, once or twice, like, like in the COVID years. But it kind of makes me wonder if that wouldn't have just been better. <laughs> like, just had, like, a, a multi-week... I Again, it comes back to, like, the whole the value time thing. So, I'd rather get it done in, in one thing rather than split it out for a couple of weeks, but I do think that it was probably just like, you know, an idea they were like, what if we just made this tournament uh, the same as an online tour, but we took away all the, the scouting and all the, the match fixing and all that other stuff, and then it just kind of like flopped, and now they're seeing the outcry, and they're like, okay, 
let's just say it was a mistake um, and attempt to make amends, which whether they'll actually do that, if it was all intentional, is probably pretty low. So uh, and here's the thing, is that even the players who succeeded in this, in this theoretical like system, if you want to even call it that, even they're just like flabbergasted. They're just like, yeah, I, I got like ninth, but I don't feel like I got ninth. A number like, of players are saying like this feels bittersweet type of things. You know, like I, I'm happy to have qualified, but sad because of how poorly this was run. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I, I do think um, one thing I want to get back to with uh, with Adi's whole rant, and this was kind of also uh, brought up by Nerd of Now in the chat. Uh, saying that he thought uh, points two and three seem like not like accidents they're, they're, or bugs or anything. They definitely seem intentional. Like not being able to see your rating and uh, like the instant queuing, uh, like, maybe not the rematch thing. I think it's actually more like one and two, but like, you know, th those just seem like they were coded in. Those don't just like happen accidentally. You know, like we've, we've run so many online tournaments already that the, why would this one be so different? Um, and then I also uh, wanted to reference uh, Nick's comment from a, a bit ago where he said this is the first Worlds in Japan. And uh, I, I also kind of want to just, like, make it broader. This is the first, you know, Worlds in Asia. And just all of these regions giving getting such a, like, getting their chances in, like, cut in, in such, like, stupid ways because of the, 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 the shitty systems that they're having to go through to qualify is so ridiculous. And it's just, it is such a bad look. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we were looking at this. Uh, this one it, in uh, nerd. Maybe next time. Maybe one of these days you can be a guest on on the show. Yeah, yeah, we would be happy to have you on sometime in the future. Okay, but have you considered what if we just add Alex and James to the call right now and just let them go off? <laughs> they haven't talked. We would we would lose the rest of our airtime, bro. <laughs> We need our <laughs> we need our Twitch chat interaction. I'm sure there's a metric for that, right? <laughs> Keep typing. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to we'll have to get you guys on in the future. It would definitely be all right. What if, what if we have what if we have a call in phone number that people can call into? Oh, oh my true. god, that, that, radio, radio show time. That would be awesome. That a actually would be so fire though. Line. What? That'd be lit. <laughs> um, that actually sounds so so awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> i would love that um yeah I, I, that that is nuts um in, in happier news um i i hope that you guys are all as happy about this as i am um ray rizzo 2023 stop at stop nothing at nothing stop at yeah. nothing stop at nothing oh my god <laughs> every time yeah. we thought he'd stop he actually I, and what's <laughs> it's crazy because like i we've been talking about all this dog shit at this tournament but it couldn't stop him it could, this was this was not going to get in the way of the three-time world champion Ray Rizzo back at it. Um, so I think funny. he uh, stopped at eleven games. I think he uh, I think he went nine two. I think uh, maybe he said that in his follow up to his. Uh, let me see. No, everyone's just saying that's my goat. Congrats. I I thought he said he went nine two somewhere. Um, but yeah. Um, so uh, so hype. Uh, I I mean I'm just such a big Rizzo Ray Rizzo fan, especially as like a, a VGC boomer at this point. Like I started several years after the guy, but at this point people probably lump us in the same boat where it's just like, oh those guys have been playing forever. You know, you know, Ashton, John, you're in the same boat too. Adi, uh, you, boat. Can, you can join us in here too. Nah, uh, I play, I was man, active during the time he was playing, but you want you want my Ray Rizzo story? I uh back I started I, my small gun account is 2009, so I was like I've been playing Pokemon for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and at the time I just moved to India from Iowa. Um, and was still experiencing culture shock. Uh, and part of like what kept me playing Pokemon was hearing that this kid from Iowa uh, had won the world championship. And I was like, oh man, if he can do that, I can do that. And so I kind of kept playing. Uh, and so that was definitely, uh, a very Rizzo definitely had a big impact on my, uh, my Pokemon career as well. Yeah. I, I mean, he, like legitimately when, uh, what was it? Like, I, I think that like, a lot of people look up to like Justin Tang currently as like a, an inspiration for mm. like newer players getting into the game. Whereas like I, I'm an older player who's definitely been struggling this season. I've got my world's invite stuff, but like I'm looking at Ray and I'm like, this is my inspiration. This is like, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> all right, you know what? The people who have been playing forever, maybe they can still do it. Paul Ruiz, you know, another player, like it just like whenever I see them do well, I'm just like, all right, you know what? Maybe, maybe there's still a chance for me. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, I also nerd him now. You said, uh, Aaron actually updated the banner. Uh, yeah, I was DMing with, uh, trailer. He said that now that he's actually done it, he had to make a clean version of the image. Uh, <laughs> like, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, it, it is Wipe time. the slate. Wipe the slate. Yeah. Uh, he's for back, those not baby. familiar with the meme, it's actually a, a, a super excellent meme. Uh, it's one of the, one of the greatest ones, honestly, from um, Pokemon. Let's see. Is this the, uh, here's a complete thread of all the stop at nothing images. There's 2014. Oh, yeah. Ray Rizzo tweeted out the original 2014. Stop at nothing. Said, I'm making my comeback this year. So, wait, so Ray won Worlds in 2012, right? Like, yes. He, he won 10, uh, 11, 12. Yep. And then yes. he did, did he not qualify in 13? Um, I think he, well, he had an immediate qualification because he won the previous Worlds, but I don't oh, think he don't cut. That was before I was. Oh, so this is not him. Beatles. About this is not about him qualifying for worlds. This is about him no. winning again. Then, I think so. E yeah. Yes. Well, I don't. I don't know if Rizzo qualified in 2014 because he didn't I, have the free invite from 2013. But this was about him qualifying in 2014, or like, or, or, sorry, this is not about him qualifying. It was, no, this is, is a, this is this is about him winning again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, 2013 I broke the streak, so he was like, "I gotta beat the, I gotta get a streak back on." I see. Yeah. So he's like, "All right, stop at nothing," and then, um. And then I think he started, to, yeah, he, that was when he started to slow down. I think was, did, did, when did he start to slow down? 15, 16? 2014, 15, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> then every year he would still, you know, give, dabble in the game. Um, mm -hmm. And he, um, yeah, so we have the Ray Rizzo, uh, the original, like, when, when we get to the 2016 is when the <laughs> image starts to get memed. We, we're like, all right, 16, then we move on to 17. Eight is when mm -hmm. it gets really good. We get the clip art in there or the word <laughs> art or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, baby. Nineteen. Uh, it, it, Ray Rizzo tweeted out himself, but made it a Valentine's Day mm -hmm. uh, image. That was so good. Uh, I loved that one. Um, <laughs> twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. A champion's heart can never fade. Um, and we have like the Twitch emote in the background, and like somebody keeps like censoring out the old images, but not cleaning it up. Um, I love That's it. That's so funny. Uh, and then he could not actually play in 2020 because of residency issues um because mm. he was like in japan or something mm -hmm. uh, yeah that was when he tried to play players cup. Oh, it was players players cup. cup it was players oh, cup yeah, it was yeah, players yeah, yeah. Yeah. in japan <laughs> body bro oh my gosh <laughs> um and then uh and then yeah they actually referenced the meme itself when ray rizzo was the final boss of players cup uh, this was so hyped, man. Were you guys hyped when Ray Rizzo was announced as the final boss? I was so hyped. Dude, <laughs> that, was so crazy. that was so sick. It was, was so, so awesome. Sick. Um, so incredibly awesome. Um, and then, I, yeah, this is why I'm so excited that Ray is back. 2023. He's. <laughs> What's so funny? It's more convenient for him. I'm, I'm so he's gonna be he's gonna be the first three match too. He's gonna be round one oh, yeah. day one stream for sure. Oh, they're picking as up for soon sure. as they announced Japan Worlds, Ray, Aaron posted that they could not have made this more convenient for him if he <laughs> tried. <laughs> and he it does. feels like, uh, I was going to say, being around, you know, watching all of these develop, it's like when you're like, when you start like a show when it comes out and you get to watch like the seasons as they come out and you'd be like, all right, well, I got to wait till next year. Let's see what, see what they're going to post with the Ray Rizzo coming. You know, if there's going to be another Ray Rizzo stop at nothing meme yeah. and they never disappointed. It was, I loved watching these yeah. as they were coming out. You never knew when they were coming, but then when they came, you're just like, oh yeah, this is tasteful. This is great. Um, like, oh, he's still not stopping. Okay, cool. Yep. I, yeah, no, Burns was Burns is right. Stop at 370 was the most heartbreaking one. He <laughs> yep, yep. That's I think we've told that story so many times now. 2018 uh, year, 2017 format, I think. Or, yeah, like he, mm -hmm. he was, it was the 2018 year, and he would, was doing really well in post Worlds 2018, like, you know, the 2017 format. 2017. Just racking mm -hmm. up points. Got 370. Worlds invite is 30 points away. He goes to like an internet, commentates, and then he just like does a couple like maybe more commentary gigs and stops playing. And it's just like, why, why? He <laughs> so, stopped. He stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the he world needed him most, and he vanished. It was yeah, so true. so sad. True. Um, I guess I guess technically Aaron Zhang is doing that now because he plays uh, at events every now and then, but he also casts like half the events too. So it's like. Oh yeah, he got the travel board <laughs> to OCIC and ended up commentating anyways. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. so good. Some crazy circumstances that we can only dream of being uh not as not as successful. <laughs> so, not as well rounded, perhaps. Um 
so let's go ahead and uh, move on to our next topic, which is Malmo. Um, I actually had a, a, a European friend who was, like, asking me, like, about, you know, like, why we don't do the same uh, ratings and stuff for these events. And that's just because we we're not as mm. informed on the European scenes. And so if I said this is a four out of five, like, you know, a bunch of Europeans are going to come at me and, like, you know, no, this is the most competitive tournament of the year. And then, uh, you know, it's like, so I, I we, we don't have... We're we're going to talk about it because it's upcoming and it's an important event. But um, but yeah, is this a uh, this is a regional? Okay, this is a regional. Yes. Mm. Um. So it's uh, I believe we do have the uh, casting table. I think they tweeted it today. So yeah. To find it. We got we got Zoe Lou. Yeah, we got oh, we got okay. we got Zoe. Um, she oh, like has the moved over Oceania to. Internet, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. She. I think I think most people know by this point that she moved over to um, Europe. I think. Was it London? Uh, oh, I somewhere didn't know that, actually. Like, yeah, yeah, she's uh, a, it, it, I learned about that, like, a couple months ago. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's great to see her kind of, like, come back and, like, you know, contribute to the community. Because she kind of, like, did that one thing in the internet. So then she, like, went to Worlds there. I think she showed up a couple other regionals. And then, like, she kind of faded away, a la Ray Rizzo, kind of. But uh, I guess she's back on the casting table. So uh, that'll be definitely exciting. I think, is Jamie Boynt on the table, too? I don't, I don't actually remember. I need to, I need to find this tweet. <laughs> yeah, if you I have it, I want to see it too. Yeah, I just don't feel free to drop it, it in the chat. I'll pull it up. But this, uh, this is going to be a pretty big tournament. Seven hundred twenty players. That's all age division. So it's going to be over six hundred masters for sure. And um, so that's going to be uh pretty exciting, pretty huge. Um, I don't remember what else. I feel, I like, say, I feel but... like it's from Victory Road themselves. Oh, they like they ended up tweeting that. Okay, yeah. I yeah. guess just let me know if you mm. find it. Um. Yeah, they they've got. Uh, I was wondering why they're like, um, travel award thing. Oh, this is day two. Oh, here we go. Wait, they, do they get the? They get eight travel awards, right? Uh, no, I I. Hmm. No, not, maybe, day, not maybe, day two. I'm talking about like travel award things. Yeah, maybe it's eight travel awards, sixteen day two. I I don't know. I can't remember. It's a good question. I just know it's the sixteen day two. That's yeah, all I. Yeah, yeah. We can't talk about that. Every time it creates beef, we're not gonna do. We're not gonna do this. We're gonna. I'm just saying. All, all I ever cared about was the day two, not the money. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just that's my one, my one thing on it. So. Uh, yeah. What's the kicker two. for day two? Is it three hundred something? Also, wait. Is, why I, is? Oh, you mean like day two Swiss? Yeah, yeah. I believe it's only like two twenty seven. Oh, I think sorry. it's oh. like that. I could that's be wrong, but I, I that's what that's in my. I head thought two twenty seven was for nine rounds. But I think it's the same though. I think if you hit nine oh, rounds, okay, if you hit nine rounds, I, okay. again could totally be wrong. Could totally be wrong. But I thought it was the same. Nah, nah I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. This, this is supposed. This structure stuff supposed to be your guy. You you guys who do the day two chasing stuff. No, nah, I just I business. go and I go and I win. You don't worry about if you're playing <laughs> how many rounds or whatever. That's true. That's true. Oh wait, did it say the capacity was seven hundred twenty players? Oh, oops. Oh. I think someone said it was like 370 Yeah, players. I'm seeing that now. Latsu said it was 375 mm -hmm. registrations. Okay. 720 gotcha. capacity. Yeah, yeah. So there's like plenty of spots if you uh, are watching and have never been to a tournament and just wants to be the first one. It's a good time. You should go to it. Um, yeah, I did post the uh, casting table in the dock. It's four people. Um, let me see. Oh, wait. Okay, let me go grab that. There we go. Yeah, it's Kyrie Ko, Zoe Lou, Charlie Merriman, and David Partington. Oh, okay. Um, I think Charlie did an earlier European regional. I'm not sure mm -hmm. which one because I, I didn't pay too much attention to that. I don't know if David was on the table for that one either. Uh, but Ben is definitely someone who I've seen be on the, the casting table quite yeah, often. That's very exciting, yeah. So, looks like a pretty good lineup. So, dang, I'm looking so, forward to that a lot. Hang up job. Yeah, I might, I might even turn the, turn the, turn the, the stream on. For, well, no, I won't, because I'll be somewhere doing other things. But <laughs> I'll go watch the VOD. Let's I'll put it nice, that way. Yeah. Wait, uh, <laughs> just double check it. Ashton, you are going to Hartford, right? Uh, so I'm not actually. Oh, really? I thought this. Was I had, I had work, and then the like the work event got moved like a month. It got like just moved like a whole month, you know, later, and it was like a week ago, and I was like, am I really gonna go to Hartford when I'm not in the day two race a week in advance? I was like, no, I don't think so. Okay, so you oh, so, so it cleared up, but you just decided, yeah, it wasn't worth it. I well, I was like, I can take other job opportunities, and I was like, do I either 
again, because it's, it's like factoring the whole not day two thing. It's like when I already have my invite, it's like, do I want to go to Hartford and spend like $500 or do I want to go to work and make $500? I was like, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it's just like the net difference is really large there. So I was yeah. like, I'm, it's, it's too last minute. I'm just not yeah, going to, yeah. I'm not going to so go for it. So none of us are going. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, for us and everybody else who's here in the Twitch chat, not attending any tournaments, a lot of content this weekend, lots to look mm-hmm. forward to. Okay. Um, I personally, uh, I, I probably mentioned this before, but I just don't get much enjoyment out of watching events back. I know Adi always talks about, like, you know, watching them back at two times speed. That's your thing. Uh, for me personally, oh, uh, I, and I think that's fine, uh, but, like, I always get spoiled on the results. I'm never going to wait to, like, see, like, how the tournament did. When I know the results, every set is tarnished. I can't watch them. And so, um, because then, like, it's just, like, there's no, there's no suspense. It's, like, oh, how is this turn going to go out? It looks bad for this person, but they win anyway? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's why I, I love watching them live. Live events are the, the, the fun ones. And so... Um, <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to watch both of these. Uh, and, you know, just look at the, the players, you know, trying their hardest, using some cool teams, some, some stuff that I can rip. You know, I'm sure everybody's looking for stuff to, uh, <laughs> to, to steal. Uh, the next great thing. Yeah. Yep. yep. So uh, I do think that uh, this ahead, is Justin. about the midway point of the format existing. We have another month and a half from here. So from here on out, I feel like people will be paying more attention to team comps, especially as time gets closer and closer to NAIC or um, I guess Milwaukee and Fresno. Those are the last couple of American regionals. Uh, are there more events after that? There's like a couple special events and stuff, right? And there's there's of... three special events coming up. There's one special yeah. event this weekend too. I think in um, in uh, one of the South American countries, not Bogota, it's a different one. Um, mm. but uh, yeah, there's a special event coming up too. So this can be three pseudo regionals coming up. Yeah, but uh, for me anyway, this is something that I've been experiencing this for this like this uh year as well as like I guess I experienced it a little back in like the COVID era, but like the formats switch around at a. Fa- rate way faster than i'm used to so it's always baffling to me that i was like oh yeah knoxville was like the last format (laughs) and that was like oh yeah eons ago in my current brain because i've been switching to this format and i've also been playing more games in this format going to the regionals there so i'm also using the same archetype (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah i well no i'm not using i'm not using the same archetype uh okay but uh uh, yeah, I guess as people are trying to figure out what they're scrambling to get together for the last couple events, they might be looking to results from these ones, the more modern ones, uh, to kick off their team building process. And I guess we'll just see what happens. Things have developed really interestingly, uh, at least from my perspective. Uh, so mm-hmm. I kind of hope that it will continue to develop. Things like Palafin not being a Haze mod anymore, or uh, people yeah. starting to run Sub and Booster on their uh, Flutter mains and mm-hmm. doing other stuff with them. So I and, hope stuff, stuff continues to develop. That's, that's what I can ask for. We talk about this being like a shorter format, but I think this is about the same length as Ultra Series, right? Like it started around the same time. Fair. Um, yeah. It's not that unusual for our world's formats to, yeah. um, assuming this is a world format, we don't know. That's, yeah, um, that's the dangerous to, to start at this time. No, we really yeah. don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm standing like, by its Paldea Prologue. It only makes sense to have <laughs> the up, world's party Paldea Prologue. <laughs> shut up. I mean, like, I think, I think 2018 <laughs> was a different format with Incineroar, and so like, that started around the same time and so it feels like this is a normal length and i need to actually i'm curious i need to look back at like when did those formats start to um standardize and start to feel like they were settling down and we knew what we were going to face i don't really remember off the top of my head um but we're definitely feels like we're reaching that point right now uh for uh for this this regulation c um oh i would love to lo- use trick room or saluna <laughs> just yeah 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 I, I... give me sneezler all right we, we got <laughs> D- G Max Butterfree at home. I guys. don't think we're getting yeah, home true. though. I think I, the weird format. Here's my weird format. We're gonna get. Mm. Um, they're just gonna let us use all of these like event, not event. Uh, the raid event Pokemon that they're letting. Oh, oh it's and it's gonna be super unimpactful because like, and oh no guys, you can it. use Chestnut now, and it's like anyway, like. <laughs> but did you know Chestnut is a is a Fluttermane counter if you Terra Steel? Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I think there's a lot of Pokemon that are a Flutter main counter if you Terra Steel. <laughs> I know. That's true, yeah. Big Garg? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's like, uh, are there any good Pokemon that are like in the game? Like Charizard, right? I guess like we could get Charizard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Greninja's like okay, but Protean nerf. Um, yeah, Charizard's yeah. also like, are you really gonna run Charizard over the Protosynthesis mods? Like, how many Sonic users can you really have? Or Chi is it Chiyu? Yeah, are you gonna? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be picking yeah. Chiyu over Charizard most of the time. I'm gonna be honest. Walking um, Wake though. Okay, if we get those guys, if we yeah, get yeah, those, yeah, guys. those guys. Um, I'm just trying to think of like, cause the, I don't think we're getting anything added to the game before Worlds. Um, I don't think home. I don't think mm -hmm. DLC. I, obviously, DLCs have like confirmed dates and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's coming into the games is these like drip feeded like event raid things, and so like we might have a couple extra starters, but that's like the only other format i could see besides something stupid like john mentioned which is honestly not even that stupid Dude. i just i just don't want it that's what i mean yeah you don't want it but i mean it, 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 like luca luca poses a good question do you want to deal with eleki bundle or do you want to deal with miraidon bundle <laughs> which of those two is less toxic uh man no i, don't, I, mean, I don't if don't i can't dynamax my eleki i don't want to answer that <laughs> if i can't dynamax my eleki i think it's a lot less problem no but you can make your you can make your eleki a different type okay I or, or wanna... double its stat like double its stab hello Just keep it electric just <laughs> yeah, do it true, again true that's just fine I'll run again. A... Yeah. everyone gets to run talent tusk it's no big deal that's true talent tusk is yeah. a great let me, uh let me pose a silly question and you guys can call okay I mean, Urshifu Chen Pao. What's up? Mm, that's Urshifu scary Chen Urshifu Chen yeah, Pao no, is, scary Chen Pao is scary I i'm surprised that that ability did not get touched okay anyways uh let me let me post something and if it's ca uh, let me let me let me post my take and pose sorry not post uh my mm -hmm. take and if it's cap feel free to call me out on it but it is tub takes after all is bundle more toxic than a lucky and i'm like not even like thinking like a lucky from like a dynamax standpoint because like it wasn't a very mm -hmm. different type of metagame like bundle mm -hmm. has terra a lucky had dynamax but kind of like pushing those aside is bundle more toxic because like my my main issue and why I think Bundle is more annoying is, one, Electroweb, you could avoid the uh, typing of it with a ground type. That was very, at least, that was very convenient mm. at the very least. And then, two, Bundle um, has, like, really insane coverage. Freeze-dry Hydro Pump is really hard to resist. And then, uh, lastly, uh, it is putting Hydro Pump on a, like, very relevant Pokemon that just forces a lot of uh, variants. But, I don't know. Uh, I think um... Lucky was definitely a lot more... I'm going to say Aleki was more toxic. Yeah. I think the fact that Aleki had an ability that was always active because it basically gave you a free life orb, and mm -hmm. then you could put another life orb on it. And then you could also just use moves that had better base power. Like, something with Bundle that I think I, I kind of experienced in testing and playing against it is that to have that much speed, you can't actually hit as hard as you want because Freeze Dry is low base power. Hydro Pump hits True. a lot harder, but it can miss. Aleki doesn't really have that problem, because T-Bolt is, like, just a strong move. T-Bolt does, like, a zillion damage, especially if you put Terrain up from I guess that is the, probably the main factor, is the fact that um, Aleki, like, was... It, it was speed controlling, and, like, that's the thing that is comparable between Bundle and uh, Aleki, but Bundle is not just O-coing everything it looks yeah, at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, sure, you're gonna one-shot the Murkrow with Freeze-Dry, but, I mean, you're probably not one-shotting, like... I, I don't know. I, I've seen like Gyarados's live freeze dry without Terra. Yeah, it's just like yeah. that's crazy stuff, bro. That mon is weak, uh, or maybe Gyarados is just too fat. I don't know. It's one of those two things. I think that Alki without Dynamax is much less problematic. I think that if you can fake yes. it out, it suddenly becomes way less of a problem. I do agree. I think that um, the inability to set electric train up and give itself like more multipliers and give itself a base one forty power uh, rising voltage is less of a problem. Like, and I think that Alki was also like. Sort of a necessary evil to deal with Dynamax Kyogre and Dynamax Charizard, which is otherwise really hard to Oko. Um, and so uh, I think that Eloki in this format is going to be less of a problem than Bundle. I also think Bundle would be just as problematic as Reggie Eloki in a Dynamax format because it can also oh, boost sure. its own power up uh, and also outspeeds the entire sure. format. And also, just everything that Reggie Eloki does is just slightly slower. Um, it's still the fastest thing in the field. Um, if you put them on like a level playing field, if you put Iron Bundle and Reggie Alki, and you said which one would be better with Dynamax? I mean, obviously Alki beats Bundle, but like, uh, I think that they are equally toxic. It's just that Reggie Alki was playing with a very toxic mechanic, and therefore was more toxic. Yeah, See, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Uh, but yeah, I that's, know the other thing is like Bundle does end up being faster than a Lucky in terms of uh, speed after booster, 
And so it's even more of a Tailwind counter. I'm not usually a Tailwind player, but, like, whenever I do, like... Like, it is silly that, like, even a Pokemon as fast as Great Tusk can't be used in Tailwind because of Bundle without, like, a Choice Scarf. Um, yeah. I don't know. It Both of them are pretty limiting Pokemon is all I will say. You know, they, they are... Um, they're annoying in both of their respective formats, uh, but a lucky in its own respective format was definitely more toxic. That's fair. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, we don't have to talk more about uh, formats that don't exist yet. I hate talking about those. Uh, yes. So let's uh, let's move on to talking about Hartford that's taking place in a hey, format wait, wait. that does exist. We didn't do smart monies for Melmo. What's your smart money for Melmo? Oh, I don't have um, one, dude. I don't know. Who, my I don't smart know money. Going. My smart Who's your money favorite European player? Is... <laughs> uh marcus because marcus loves my teams there you go there you go i agree (laughs) yes that's a good smart money all right alex who's your smart money you you go first because i don't have one all right i can't sadly defend my my home regional in sweden but my fellow american swede nils dunlop is going to defend his our homeland and to take down this regional um all right all right and then uh actually i'm gonna steal the one from bruno because i i'm uh also i think trick room is lit so let's let's pick soto i think i picked soto for another another event before but yeah yeah eric rio is always good pick arash okay. another good pick yeah some good smart money's I, there i scrolled down to the bottom of the malmo regionals victory road page and it says uh sweden's greatest success is american sweden nils dunlop uh and i can't wait for me to win worlds and then that's oh yeah yeah you're gonna be the next best american <laughs> every sweden. every malmo regional <laughs> All right, all right. All right, Ashton, who's your smart money? I was agreeing with you. I he's definitely just... think Marcus. Yeah, he's yeah. Smart. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We, okay, we he's always one of my favorite players to watch, you know. True. So I, I want to see him do well, and also he's been doing really well this year, so it's like... Big Marcus I just Odds are, odds are up there, yeah. Um, Roxon, another uh-huh. good pick. Paul Ruiz, yeah, I like these picks. I like these picks. Uh... Would Paul Ruiz go? Wait, Paul Ruiz isn't no, even. No, surely anymore. Paul Ruiz is going to the uh, event in Buenos Aires and not the event like, in. Uh, he's in, not even in, in that region. Right, <laughs> is Buenos Aires this weekend like... too? Yes. Oh, awesome! We'll have a lot to talk about next week. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's talk about Hartford though. Um, can anybody that's well, none of us are attending. Cool, cool. Love this. Oh my god. Yeah. I, what are the numbers? I wanted somebody to open the the, the dashboard page for it. Does anybody know? All right, uh, all right, I Nick, all emails, Justin, Nick, go get to it. Chat. Somebody, yeah, somebody in the it. chat, let us know how big this event is going to be. How many people are signed up? I I think it's like pretty large though. I thought it was supposed to be very, very big. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. Techno Z with seven hundred and seventy one number. Wow. Oh, wait, you, Ooh, big was, number. Okay. So that is about the same amount that signed up for Orlando, I think. Is it capped? Um that's crazy. Capacity undisclosed. Very cool. Yeah, um, no, it says here, but everyone's coming through in the chat. Thank you guys all for uh for looking that up for us. 770 uh 771. We wouldn't be here without you guys. You you um, real MVP. <laughs> so that's a, that is a lot. It is sadly not going to be bigger than some of the other ones we've seen this uh this year, I don't think, because they I mean, unless we have I think like that's a very the same few... size, that's but the no, same I, number. I, of I'm just saying it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna break. Um, yeah, I don't. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna break Orlando. I think Orlando had like 800 signed up. Um, I guess it depends on people showing up, but you know. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> never mind. It is 769 because somebody in the chat oh, confirmed nice. they're not going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Nobody Anybody else speak down. now so we can have accurate numbers. This is very important to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But anyways, um, this is in Hartford, um, which is, I believe, somewhere in this picture. I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> Adi told me it was the star, there. and I'm going to trust him. Um, it's in Connecticut. It's, the, Connecticut is not a big state, okay? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, so maybe just make the star bigger. Then you'd be more likely to be accurate, you know? Um, so the thing is, I took the image from Google Images and then I put the star there, but the Connecticut was taking up the oh, entire state. The, it's a tiny in? state. <laughs> yeah. Nice. This is a good star. Look at look at your photo work, man. Hey, mm-hmm. Do you want to? This is what happens when we let. This is what happens when look- we let Adi come up with a difficulty rating meme. By the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, sorry. you you asked. I said, "Here's my submission," and then I went to bed. I did not have. <laughs> and then you, I, you could have agreed. picked a better one. And then you knocked um, out for like four hours or something in the middle of the day. I respect it. I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of naps. Um, shout out to the one half uh, Rhode Island people. Yeah, true. Well, I guess you're not a real state. Sorry. Um, you, we figured out which region is going to hate Adi this week. 
right, so we gotta we do gotta talk about the the difficulty though. I mean, it's a big tournament. Uh, it's in mm-hmm. like the the middle of the format. There's been a lot of development, and uh, as we said a number of times, the the East Coast players love to use boring. Um, they they love to use like the the, the Palance type teams. They're they're probably gonna be ripping off of uh common teams that we've seen already in this season. There's definitely gonna be some innovators though there, and I'm rooting for them. Um, but you know, uh, players like 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 uh, uh, I you know, Luca is a good balance player. Uh, Joe is probably gonna be running his uh, son stuff. Um, you know, I, I there's like a uh, there's probably... Caleb Caleb just top cut Portland True. on uh, yeah, on true. balance, and he's a he's a New England player. Yep. Um, Alchua of course popped off with balance. He's in the same region. Um, there's a lot of like very so high did got top sixteen at USC with balance. He's going. Um, so. It would not shock me to see a lot of balance in this tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Balance is so boring. It's so boring. Thank you. It's, Somebody it's says true. it. Balance After so I've been boring. using it, it's so good, but it's just... I, I hate playing it. I don't even like using it. Oh, my gosh. Just, just I miss the old man. Ashton. I know, I know. Hey, you would have loved you would have loved the Dud on Sparse match. I, I, no, I saw, the, about... I saw the, the Powdon team, and I was like, he's back. He's, he's back. <laughs> he's back. But it was only for the GC. Bro. Only for the GC. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm. So I'm as a as a boring player to death. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also he, stands by Fisher. What a lame-o. I was gonna say. Yeah. He's a Fisher clicker. He just you know loves the thrill of it. He loves the thrill, and then he claims that no, you don't. You just don't click it until you have to. It's like okay. Yeah. <laughs> That just everyone, means you're sweaty so about clicking Fissure. You're not Honestly, like the juniors we were talking about earlier. I could respect uh, James Evans' teams. James uses, like, slightly off stuff. Like, it's, like, relatively... He doesn't do anything crazy, except the Hail team. That was pretty weird. Hail team was... But, uh, uh, James, 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 is, like, James is like me in my prime, for real, for real. I just ran crazy offensive stuff and had a bunch of fun doing it. Yeah. Now no. I just run crazy offensive stuff and fail doing it, so... <laughs> <laughs> and you have a mildly upsetting time doing it, but it's fine. <laughs> Meta Finny, oh no. Um, okay, so I don't really know what else to say about the meta. Like there there's like a couple of big archetypes right now. There's um there's like Chiyu bundle. Is that considered an archetype or is that too I mean it's part of Dozo often? Um it's like core. splash. It, it was uh, it was all over the place, right? It was on Palance, it mm-hmm. was on um it was on it just kinda everywhere. Um what what are the other archetypes? I I actually have been playing uh, a Sun lot of other. Sun has been games, popping so. off recently. Sun, right? Sun has been popping off. Uh, Joe, Joe did really well with it. Joe yeah. Uh, I think Mezzi had um had Sunny Day on his Murkrow and could could kind of go that sort of mode. So we've seen we've seen Torkoal. Like we've seen Torkoal Trick Room teams do pretty well. So I think that Sun is uh is kind of all over the place now. Um and probably if I had to rank my top four right now, if I was prepping for Hartford, which I'm not, thankfully. Um, I'd be looking at Palance, still number one, still everywhere, and especially in the East Coast. I think Dozo, you just have to respect it. Mm-hmm. Chiyu Bundle back. is is sort of like a is sort of connected to Dozo, but like that two on core Chiyu, uh, Chiyu Bundle Fluttermane is just such an easy thing to put on offensive teams it does exist that you really have yeah. to uh, just know how you're going to approach that and have flexible game plans into that because of how flex how uh, splashable that uh, core is. And then I think that um, Sun. And different variants of Sun is really, really common, and I want counterplay to that. And so, if you were prepping for Hartford, those are the big four. Obviously, the stuff on the periphery, we saw Sand do very well. We saw Hale do very well. Um, we saw, you know, a variety of other teams uh, in the top 32 of Portland. And uh, we saw Orthworm do well at, uh, at Brazil. And so, there is a lot of stuff, like, one level below the meta, but I think those are the big four in the meta for me. I, I was just going to bring up Orthworm, actually. I was going to say, like, do we still feel like it's off meta, or or is that something that we'd call meta at this point? Because it, again, it saw so many results. I, I kind of feel like Ting Lu is common enough and paired enough with Orthworm that it's like meta fringe. Like I, I no, yeah, I, I think I that's probably about where I put it. It is a strategy that people feel like they need to have answers to now, from what I've been seeing, and so I think it's like something you can say. It's like maybe not like a top three, top four, top five. Uh, yeah. archetype or strategy but like you know maybe maybe it fits in the top 10 um, it's and... it's probably it's probably more common than size spam at least mm-hmm. i think you can still see size spam but it's still going to be incredibly rare i still think people haven't bought into the idea that 
you're gonna run size spam in a format where there's four really good dark nah, types. Size spam's kind of dead. But, I yeah, I don't see a lot of stall yeah. anymore. Like the uh, stall, yeah, Mora. stall seems to be dropped except by the most dedicated of builders. Like I yeah. think um, there was one guy at our local who was just like full stall. Every Pokemon had a passive damage move. It was crazy. And he I, like I, did y'all see? This so, is the one that won the Brazil Premier Challenge. A Brazil no. Premier oh, Challenge. Oh, oh. Uh, no. Hold up, hold up. Let me let me find it. Is it actually? Uh, there was enough? a. All right, let's see. Oh, absolutely. There was a Chansey Stall player that oh, no, won no, no. the Brazil oh. Premier Challenge. Yeah, I think they just uh, got bored, bro. I think they just got bored. <laughs> they just got I think bored. Every, everyone just got bored. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, legit, I think people just got bored. <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone fell asleep while playing. It's just like, well, I guess we got to give it to him. He's still awake. <laughs> but yeah, back on the topic of worm. Oh wait, we got the link. Here we go. But uh, anyways, I do want to mention. I'm a big worm fan. I think worm is awesome. I think it's a really cool archetype. It's definitely something I'll be looking into when I am um, going into like one of my next tournaments. But uh, I don't know when that's going to be. Yeah, so, Alex loves. Well, I do know when that's going to be. But oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wow, this is actually pretty fun. Bronze on Garg, Chansey, Glim, Hippo, and the Wochia. No, no, no. I I'm mean, hyped. I'm hyped. I'm a fan. Yeah, this is sick. They got me. <laughs> Um, they've got double, double rock type, and then the sand setter being the not rock type, it's a ground type, um, but they, they only need sand chipping down the Wochian and the Chansey. Brazil has to be the biggest Wochian, like, standing people that I, I have seen, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's Joe that six in second, so it managed to beat that, it, it beat, um, yeah, I mean, it is, if, assuming it played, you know, at least two of these teams in top cut, or three of them, it, uh, oh. it seems to be that it, uh, ran through some relatively respectable teams and, and and it came out on top so shout out to daniel that that is an awesome looking team I'm, I'm loving it um but yeah back to uh back to harford or no we were talking about i don't know what we're, we're talking about uh talking about top, worms and archetypes and meta oh yeah top that's archetypes yeah meta. um in, in regards to harford of course yeah yeah i don't know if there's um much more to say about the the meta like it is like still developing and um I think more we're seeing more and more uh, teams being put out there for people to steal. I do think that's like relatively relevant. Like these tournaments are so big, and the teams that are able to rise all the way to the top are definitely teams that you can rip and run at the next tournament. They don't become unviable immediately, and so um, you know you still have to make sure you beat Joe's team. You have to make sure that you uh, can beat uh, like a, a Howl Arcanine on a Palin's team, and you know and other stuff other things you know da -da sparse uh, no i'm just kidding and <laughs> so you, you you gotta make sure that you beat these things i mean um, you say that until they roll up with like serene grace blizzard and they freeze all your mons do a lot. Wait, okay hold on i'm listening um <laughs> let's talk about the past couple hartfords though um hmm. and so there there was um two hartfords that i could find in uh history there was one back in 2017 and one in 2019 we'll talk about the 2017 one first uh one by alberto uh alberto lara over Bray Smith oh, in the yeah. finals. Um, this was. Hey, this is so hot. Uh, yeah, so I was in here. Uh, There's a lot of. I recognize a lot of names. Um, Grand Dang, John Carlo. That's a guy from a long Jira, time ago. Caswas. Um, and so yeah, this was held in looks like post Worlds 2017. Um, mm -hmm. pretty early on. This was on. my first regional ever. First regional oh, ever for Adi. Oh, wow. What? Adi, yeah, why yeah. Don't I see you in the cut. Adi, here, you're man. a baby, Where were bro. You? <laughs> I I lost to so high. Um, I lost to uh, to Case, and I lost to someone else. I lost my round one, I think. Um, so, oh Talon, you're gonna be going beat to Wacko. Uh, Harvard. Hell yeah. Wacko was my first ever win at a Pokemon tournament. <laughs> Hot Wacko, let's go! Wow, that's let's funny. Go Wacko. Um, good guy Wacko, letting letting Adi win his <laughs> first game. So, uh, looking at these names, though, um, instead of talking about the teams, I guess, let's just talk about, like, do we think any of these players are going to be attending? Sohaib, mm. I believe, is attending, right? Sohaib is definitely going to be uh, going. Alberto said um, he's going to every regional, so I think Alberto's yeah, going to be Alberto there. Alberto will be there. Brady? I'm not sure about... I think Lorsi will be there. Yeah, I think Lorsi's probably somebody there. To but I don't think the rest of these players are going. Maybe... No, no, I think what Kevin about, said he's uh, going Gramgus to Milwaukee. and Brady? Does anybody know about those two? I have no idea. I know I know Gramgus has been a, like, to a couple of tournaments this cycle. I just don't know if he's like seriously pursuing an invite or anything. I feel like Kevin is... He's like from the area, area, right? Well, yeah, if he's from the area, he doesn't really have a reason not to go, I guess. Yeah, I think he would be going. Um... Do you, I uh, I honestly don't know about Jeremy because I don't know how many events he's gone to at all. I think he's oh, just uh, pretty busy with work, etc. Are you saying like Jeremy 
the, the guy with the TV right there. Yeah. yeah, so he's actually uh, he's taken a year to study abroad in China. Actually, oh okay, so that's how he made it out. No to wonder UIT, I didn't hear. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's been he'll be back next year though, stronger. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's tough in China. You get cut off from all the social media. Yeah, and it's getting out back and forth from the country is tough. So that's why he's like, oh, it's mm-hmm. not worth coming anywhere in the U.S. Yeah, so. yep. um, it's definitely not him. So okay. it sounds like Bramgus is going though, um, and and yeah, and Larcy. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, one by a fellow tubber, Tommy Cooleen. Uh, Tommy is let's the defending Tommy. jam uh, for this one, 2019. Um, I don't remember if Hartford was going to be a 2020 regional before the season got canceled or anything, but uh, Tommy has been the holder of this title for a long while and uh, is finally going to have to go up and defend it. I actually think Tommy's like taking it easy this season, but said he's contending just because he uh, was like, well, I got to try to defend it, you know? And so... Um, so would love even to if the shield is wooden you can still got to put the shield up true <laughs> so tommy's going to be putting up a defense and um kyle i wonder if kyle's going i actually do not know i um, kind of feel like he is but i also don't know i don't know if cedric's been playing much uh james bake i could see it definitely um jj <laughs> uh um, truly yeah i think jeremy's probably going um arbin's surely going yep uh i don't know where zengel went um, he, he might have he might have been back in China, honestly. I'm not sure. I was gonna say I haven't seen their name in a while. Yeah. Like, the thing about a lot of the Chinese players that you might be seeing from past events in like the seventeen to nineteen era, I'm thinking of like mm-hmm. people like Ken. Um I guess there's like um shoot, I can't remember the name right now. Yeah, no no no. I think I saw but, Cedric uh is playing like Hearthstone. I swear Yeah, yeah. Something uh, no no, maybe it was Legend of Runeterra. It was a it was a I think it was, was Runeterra. I think he's yeah. done both, but yeah. Okay. I'm looking at Zengol's Twitter page, and it is just Mario Kart for the last year. Let's go. That's true. Awesome. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's definitely a Mario Karter. Respect it. Respect um, it. But yeah, I think uh, the Chinese player base, once they you know are done studying the, the time here, they either have, like, I feel like this is the way Ken put it anyway, who's explained it to me. They have a choice whether they can find work here, they can stay here, and then they can, like, enter the, the uh, process to become a citizen or whatever, if they want to do that. Or they go back to China. Ken went back to China, so he hasn't been, you know, playing in a scene for a while. But he still plays. I mean, every once in a while he'll pop up on Twitter and make a Big B was the best team tweet or whatever, or Bronze Knock Hypnosis is the best VGC or whatever. <laughs> uh, or he'll always say uh, Effing John because he loves to say that too. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you'll you'll see like Chinese players kind of cycle. I feel like uh, once their once their time studying is over. So maybe some of the Chinese players that show up in some of these uh, ratings, like are these results from previous formats, might not be around, but they'll still be active. I think they'll still be active. So whether they're at an event or not is a different story, but that, that's the insight I can say. I, I do miss Ken. Gotcha. Um, okay, so um, I guess that brings us to our uh, our smart bunnies. Wait, 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 okay, I got a story about Hartford Regionals too. Oh boy, All All right. Right. So... Well, get it in first. Go ahead, Mr. Interrupt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Hartford, like I said, my first regional ever. I didn't really know anyone. And uh, hotels are really expensive. You just book them for yourself and you don't know anyone. So I book uh, an Airbnb. Um, and like, okay, I need to get a single room for one person. I book like an Airbnb is like 20 bucks a night. Uh, and I get in uh, and I take my Uber from the airport to the Airbnb. And it is in the like... Yeah, you go through downtown. Downtown Hartford's kind of nice, and then you slowly start, and it gets worse and worse and worse as you keep going further and further. Uh, and I get, I, I get dropped off, and the house has this huge padlock on it, like multiple, uh, like gates on the door. Um, and the house next door is straight up abandoned, and it looks like an abandoned house from a movie, like overgrown yard, just like broken windows, all the shit. Um, and so I am just like. What did I get myself into? And I think I got in on like a Thursday night or something. Um, because I remember that uh I get in and uh I like that night I remember hearing like uh a bunch of ambulances uh or fire or fire alarms, something like that, uh going off, fire trucks going off or whatever, uh that sort of sound. Um and then I also hear like all day I hear a um I hear an ice cream truck and like even towards the evening, I hear an ice cream truck. This is like the creepiest thing ever. Um, and so the next day I tell, I, uh, I messaged the the host and I'm like, Hey, is it like safe here? And he's like, yeah. 
Like I wouldn't uh I wouldn't have this Airbnb if I didn't think it was safe, but don't go any further west. Because once you go any further west of this house, you are in the bad part of town. And at the time, Hartford was like one of the highest crime rate cities in the United States. Uh, I looked it up, and it looks like it's improved a lot. It's pretty average now. But at the time, it was one of the highest crime rate cities. Uh, and I was staying right on the edge of the hood. Um, like, <laughs> like, it is the, like, this is the first house on the street. The second house is decrepit. And then after that, it's the hood. Uh, and so um, I'm like a little creeped out. Thankfully, um, this is one of those Airbnbs where, like, they book each individual room separately. And so there were two of the people in the same house, one of whom was some random person, one of whom was a, um, one of whom was uh, another VGC player. And so I had at least one person to walk to the event with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it like, worked out fine. I didn't get, you know, mugged or anything. I was safe the entire time. Most of the time you spent at the event coming center. But uh, just so you know, that was that's my Hartford story. Uh, maybe keep an eye out for where you're staying if you try to stay closer to the venue um but but yeah that's that, that's my hard traditional experience wow <laughs> crazy stuff all right all so right. would you say it's better or worse than indianapolis <laughs> based I, on that I, experience i don't i don't i haven't been to the dangerous parts of indianapolis or anything right they're, like they're I, pretty dangerous okay. when you were describing it kind of felt like i was like hearing yeah this just sounds like indianapolis in certain parts I, yeah. that is that that is my experience in milwaukee as well uh when i studied mm. there for a summer um, it was also like you were right on the I was at Marquette University. I was right on the edge of campus. And if you went any further to the west, it was just like super dangerous. And if you go east, you're on campus, which is safe. And then further then it's just like the uh, the riverfront, um, except that was when Pokemon Go was released and all the good Pokemon were spawning in the bad part of town. So we just go oh, there anyways. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I I haven't gotten like uh, I don't think that's happened yet, but um <laughs> The I don't know. Place, the only place I don't want to go back to is uh, Baltimore. I ended up having to go through Baltimore on my way to Secaucus <laughs> Regionals. Uh, was that last year? That was that was nuts. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I've already told that story before, but I, I don't want to yeah. go back to Baltimore. Um, nah, my parents moved me out of that region for a reason, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, okay, we're, we're talking about smart decisions. Let's bring it over to smart money and mm. talk about who we think is actually going to be able to take it home this weekend at uh, Hartford. Um, and so, Ashton, you're the guest. Why don't we uh, have you start? All right, let me think. So my 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 top smart money, I, th I said it before we you know booted the stream up, but my smart money is Luca. I think, you know, no he, you get those, well, you get those back-to-back -back top fours and, like, everyone I'm sure can see, like, how hungry you get for that win you know mm -hmm. and like even even if you don't talk to him like i i know how much work we've been putting in with the teams how much work we've been putting in with this you know like i use the teams at the premier challenge that we've been cooking and i won both of them so like you know i'm i have confidence in the team i i see kind of like what he's what he's going for i i mm -hmm. i think he's hopefully gonna be able to get it this time luca please don't get top four again um <laughs> <laughs> oh no a anything else again. better or better or worse Yep, yep. And also, I mean, of course, Luca's been crushing it in online, too, in these GCs, and, I mean, that's not nothing. It means that you've got a very good familiarity with the uh, the teams, or at the very least, the archetypes. We saw mm -hmm. Agati goes from second, you know, in internets to first <laughs> in a GC. There, there's definitely... You, you can correlate some skills, and Luca's been crushing it online and offline, so um, definitely excited. Somebody to, uh, that I will be looking for this weekend, too. Um, John, who are you picking for your smart money? I feel like I'm obligated to pick Paul Chua every single one of these smart monies because uh, I'm always reminded of like, yeah, I did just cheese him out of like a whole set at uh, Knoxville. So I kind of feel like I have to pick Paul Chua. You're picking cause... it for that reason? No, yeah. Every time. If I, yeah, if I know Paul Chua is going, I'm just like, I'm just going to give it to him because you know what? He probably he probably uh, is going to need it from from me, the blessing. So I, he doesn't get like, but I don't get like cursed for, for some reason because I definitely like, I don't know. Made a deal with the devil in that one one round. Was it fissure I'm sure related? He oh, it was fissure related. Okay. Uh, well... Game one was like no. Game one was fine. Like I won that handily. But game two, he like counter led me. He like destroyed two of my leads, and then I just like fissured the rest of his mons to death with quick claw torkel, without quick claw proccing. So like you know. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say. Wait, hold on. I was gonna say. Didn't Paul like go on either at that tournament or another tournament to like fissure his way in, like in the in a winning in? I don't. I don't know. I don't uh, think he was running no, Fissure at that, that was, tournament. 
Fort Wayne was true? where he uh, he ran Fisher Ting Lu and fissured me out of uh, the win and in for D two, and then fissured Wolf out. Uh, and I think just bubbled yeah, out of cup. Um, guys, say, we're just yeah. we're just paying it forward. I'm all paying right, all well. these fissures yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, Paul Chua is John's pick. All right, I respect it. Um, and uh, okay, so then let's go with Adi. Uh, I got the uh, you know, I think people. I think I got someone who's really motivated. He uh, didn't get to go to EUIC, didn't get to go to OCIC, but is somehow still in the day two race. It's Wolf Glick. You let him brew for long enough, you know he's going to come up with something. Um, and I think that uh, he's he's probably the best player in, I mean, maybe the best player in the world, but certainly one of the better players in the Northeast region. So I think he's going to come up with something creative, especially in a format that is potentially centralizing. Uh, that's where I think he excels at cracking a format. And so it would not shock me to see Wolf break something extremely unorthodox to this regional and do very well. All right, you heard Adi. Wolf, one of the best players, maybe the best player in the world, and, you know, one of the top east coast players at the very least you know maybe top 10 but best in the world um <laughs> and then uh i was like this this doesn't make any sense um all right uh going back to me i'm actually gonna go the the opposite way and i'm gonna pick more new blood i'm going with justin tang uh justin tang gonna be the, the three peter tang gang tang uh, gang, gang three uh, feet yeah. Underhill is tang pilled right now. Uh, I, I think Justin Tang's just like got a lot of passion for the game and uh, you know works with a lot of uh, good players. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I should have waited. Uh, is Tang not going? Is it? No, no, <laughs> no. All right, run it back. Right. Oh. You got You know, I, you know what? we found Friggin out in time that I'll. I I do have some backups. Um, I thought Tang would be going. I thought he'd be going too. Oh man. Nah, he's going to the PC and not going to the regional, bro. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Um, man, I mean, is Wolf going? Do, do you know this, Adi? Do you think he's going? No, oh, I don't know. Fair. Yeah, just know fair. Um, yeah. One I, can I, only I, assume. At the very least, Paul did not deny that he's going. So yeah, you, you're all right. You're yeah. safe, John. And then I, I'm, Luca, you would know he's going. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, a uh, swizzle dizzle with the knowledge bomb. Oh yeah, yeah. T Jody <laughs> was actually thinking about ditching the event to go to it, and Tang is just going to it. I believe that is the actually. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I remember that. Uh, Tang remember got that his priorities now. in order. Jody, Jody's got brain poison. Well, Jody was actually another person I was gonna pick. So, <laughs> um, all right. Uh -oh. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pick uh, pick Jody. Jody was actually playing in the tournament, and I don't know why I'm picking Jody. I'm in Jody's team building chat, and. Uh, I, let's say i'm hoping things get straightened out in the next couple of days but honestly i don't think jody <laughs> needs to know in advance what he's using i think he will just you know um, yeah I, he, yeah not at all he makes the connections in his head in ways that nobody else understands and i think that's yeah just i gotta be honest i've been watching his channel and i'm just like uh <laughs> this is like if he took me but then like injected it with a bunch of like adhd <laughs> yeah. like i just don't know where he's going half the time. yep yep so no um, no no shade on ADHD people. You guys are wonderful. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> um, what the heck? Okay. Well, uh, you. I was just like seeing if I could pull up something on YouTube, and it was saying that I was offline. I was like, I. Oh. I we're still here, right? Um. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, that's all of our smart monies. We've got Jody. We've got um, Luca. We've got Paul, and we've got Wolf. So um. It's funny. I think after uh, last weekend, go ahead. Uh, Adi was like, you know, we should start tracking these. Um, I, I guess we'll have to, you know, come back next week and see who who ends up being the most right, though. Um, and um, and yeah, I think that's going to move us on to our uh, our last section, um, which is um, the calc is always right. Dun, dun. The calc is right. The calc. Wait, it's always right. Right? It's always is that right. what it's called? Oh, yeah, it's never cool. wrong. Calc is always right. Um, so I put mine in the dock unspoilered, but I'm also going to pull it up on stream here. It's not... Oh, wait. Is it against the right Pokemon? Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Um, I think I had it against the right Pokemon, which... Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. I'm not, um, I'm not supposed to be looking at the screen now? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I took it off. Okay. Um, oh, so, okay, 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 okay. It's not against Abra, but it is this Chiyu going for all these multipliers. It's in the dock. I'll read it out loud, though. Um, it's max special attack modest, uh, Chi Yu going for choice specs, uh, Terra Fire, Helping Hand, In the Sun, Overheat versus Great Tusk. Oh, just plain old Great Tusk. Just a regular old Great Tusk, a choice scarf set. Don't look at the screen. Mm. I'm gonna put a uh, put it up. Although I guess I didn't give Chad enough time to guess. So sorry. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of messed this one up. I, 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 next time, I'm not going to put the tweet, the, the, the Calc in advance. This is screwing everything up. Yeah. Um, so, chat, right, you said this is, this is you posted it you. in. This is like, this is all the post flyer on Chiyu with like a standard nothing, nothing. For the people in the call here, I posted the Calc, uh, spoiler free in the doc. So if you want to, uh, like you know, highlight the text, you can look at it. It doesn't have the answer. Um, but... Are you sure it doesn't have the answer? It, it definitely has the answer. What? I'm not looking at. I haven't looked at it, it yet. It definitely has. I saw has the like answer. the first. I saw the digit of the number, and I was like, maybe I should. All right, you know what? I've ruined everything. We're gonna just have <laughs> maybe Ashton look guess, and then I will find a new, a new count. count. I'll get. I, we have the backup counts for a reason. God. All right, five hundred percent. 500%? Alright, you yeah. actually are still a little under, Ashton. It's doing 644 Dang. to 757. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I was thinking of, like, pulling a calculator out with my base idea, then multiplying all the things, but, like, mm -hmm. uh, still pretty realistic. I knew it was, like, multiple times over. Like, yeah, yeah that thing yeah. was gone. The, the, I wanted to do one of these at some point with the, the calc is always right, where it's a calc that is just pointlessly over the top. Nobody needs to know that it's doing between 200% and 600%. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah. back last year, we did need to know 200% calcs for Dynamax reasons, but... Yeah, of course. Uh, but, um... But, but, yeah, anything between 200 and 600 is... It's dead. Um, I guess... Wait, 200... Or, no, did you 200 is still know? relevant if it... Uh, if, uh, in the Zenith days, uh, did you need to know 400% technically? Yeah, you technically needed to know 400%. I think you're more mm -hmm. okay with knowing, like... <laughs> yeah. You, you, you need to know like the amount of damage it does, but... and then... It. Plus two Sogaleo, yeah. Sunsteel Strike, Tizernius. Knowing the 400% is relevant for the Terra when they tear into a quad resist. That's uh, true. Yeah, they, uh, they can't quad resist. Uh, they can't. No, yeah, no, they that's can. actually just super effective to resist, right? Isn't that 400%? Oh. Yeah, uh, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah I guess that's true. Um, I'm just bad at math, guys. Listen, I'm off the job. Yeah, I, I don't have to do math. <laughs> yeah. Nails job. points out that if you um, overheat twice, you could still fail this great tusk. Actually, wait. Oh, well. If you... I think you can do it. I think you can do it all three times. Oh yeah, point. you can just kill this yeah, yeah. no matter what. Oh wait, no, he's saying versus uh, Terra Fire Tusk. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm gonna use one of the backup calcs for my submission, and we'll come back to me. But let's start with Ashton. Let's br bring up your calc. Okay, and so it was the answer the lowest percent he can do. No, is that no, what the I'm... answer just has to be the answer is the range. anywhere in the range. Anywhere, anywhere in the range. range. Okay, so all right. So you got it. The range. So this is this is coming from this weekend. It's a Pokemon that Luca used at the Premier Challenges. Mm -hmm. So, a Adamant Max Attack, Iron Jugulus. Oh, okay. Boy. <laughs> yes. I'm already With... completely lost. Go ahead. Yes. No, no. It has used its booster energy and speed, not attack. So you get a a booster used Iron Jugulus, uh, Max Attack, Adamant, Terra Flying, Acrobatics. Oh, so you, you've got the Terra Flying. Your Max Adamant. Uh, you've used your item, but it's not boosting your attack. It's boosting your speed. How much does that do to the standard showdown spread, Amoongus? Oh, man. Which is, is that 236 to... something? 236, 250, 156 bold. Uh... Here it is for those of you in the chat who need this yeah. in text form. At least I assume this is what it is. I that is, 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 is it that adamant? Is, that yeah, is correct. It is, it is yeah. adamant. No, it was Luca's idea. No one, no one pinned this on me. I did not come up with this. He's the one. Uh, all right, I've got my number. Mm. Um, I think I have a number. I've got a number. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll start us start us off. I I'm a big doubter, and everyone's saying it's gonna kill pretty convincingly. I'm putting it at ninety eight, like it's a roll to kill. Okay. Okay. Uh, John, go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty similar. I'm going a little lower than you though. I'm ninety five instead. Uh. uh Adi? I feel like I've run this calc for Jolly, and it does like 90. And so, therefore, I think that Adamant is going to do uh, about 105. Uh, also, I think Luca wouldn't be running this if it didn't kill. So, 105. Maybe that's fair. Fair, okay, fair. So All right. So, do you want me to say so the I'll... answers now? No, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, you, we'll you can, it up on stream. Or actually, yeah, I think we do it on stream. Um, okay, so go we'll... for it. It'll take you a bit. The, the spread on the, the calc is not It's, it's help. Adamant, <laughs> right? Uh, it is yeah. Adamant, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, Adam, and you have to set the IVs to thirty-one attack because the calc oh, you're right. Think... <laughs> yeah, yeah. The calc, the calc has no idea what your intentions are. Um. All right. The item. I'm just gonna. Where's none? Okay. Um. Oh my God. Wait. That's a helping hand. There we go. Um. 
take that all right wait i yeah. think i might be at the answer ashton double checking with you is mm -hmm. it 93.1 to 109.5 Yep. So all of you guys were basically in the right in the right ballpark. It is Wait. a slightly in your favor to knock slightly out. in your favor roll, huh? Slightly ninety five is just on the low end. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's you're not all, too you're bad. All in the right area of like basically yes, but no. <laughs> that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Yep. So that that was my interesting one. Is I, Luke was like, dude, J uh, Jugs is so good, physical. It's so good. I was like, <laughs> does it even KO Among Us? And the answer is like. Kinda. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I mean, yeah. like, listen, one ten BP is pretty strong. I'm not gonna lie. What is his base attack? Eighty. Okay. Well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we can we can just slide that one under the uh, uh, under the rug there. That's okay. Yeah, not my not my idea, but it's pretty <laughs> funny. I thought it was very comical. Um. Okay. okay so Who's let's next? Uh, yeah, let's throw it to um to John. All right. So this is also one from this weekend. It is not a calc from me. Uh, it is actually a calc from a set I was casting. So here's the situation. You have uh, Great Tusk with Life Orb. Uh, there is no sun. And it is Jolly. And it has used Headlong Rush into Terra Grass Iron Moth. And the Iron Moth has no bulk. Hmm. How much does that do? Life Orb. Uh, life headlong. Orb, Headlong Rush. Into Terra Grass, no bulk Iron Moth. Hmm. Huh. I have no way of conceptualizing this. I have no point of reference for this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got my, is... I've got my number. Hey, if, if any viewers at home watch the stream, you have an idea of how much damage it could do. Um, Just so you know. I, I got, Ooh, I got my it? number. Um. Yeah, I got a Life Orb, Jolly, Great Tusk, into. Yeah, uh, Terra Grass, Terra Iron, Grass Moth, no Iron Moth, No Bulk, and Headlong Rush is the move. All right, I gotta guess. Yeah, I gotta guess. Okay. All righty, uh, let's hear him. Go ahead and start. I'm gonna say 65 percent. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I'll go in there. My number is 77. Okay. I I'm going ever so slightly higher. I'm going 80. It sounds like Ash is the only one who got it in the range. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know what the calc is, but you can look it up here in a sec. Uh, I love Rush all the numbers to 700 and... Right. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's... Um... Yeah, no bulk. Terra Grass. Uh, so divide that yeah, by I eight. click the Terra button. Um, oh, man, was I just a little too high? Is this what I'm looking at? You're a little too high, yeah. I'm waiting for the... Uh... Screen to um yeah so it looks like uh yep 64.5 64 i don't know why i knew that 75.6 <laughs> so here's the situation the actual real situation was it was joe 1v1 last turn of like not last turn of tailwind like the third turn of tailwind versus the juniors like 75 percent hp moth and she had previously protected on the second turn of tailwind and he had close combat at that turn predicting a terra so then, this turn, he told me, like, there's no way she Terra's after I just clicked Close Combat the previous turn. She Terra's anyway, but then she just has, like, it just faints. And I'm just like, whoa, okay, I guess it's just that terrible defensively. But I looked it up after the set, and I was like, he won off of, like, a 6% roll. Oh my he won gosh. against the junior off a 6% roll. And if Joe's watching this VOD, he's not in the chat, I don't think. But if <laughs> Joe's watching the VOD... <laughs> why'd you why'd you gotta do it why'd you gotta do it <laughs> okay Adi, right. why don't you uh give us yours then all right all right so we got everyone's favorite series one threat we got belly bolts all right remember that that guy was good oh, for no. like a week um and it's it's weakness policy so it's got the plus two special attack boost okay. it's max special attack modest mm -hmm. um it, and it is clicking parabolic charge into oh and it's got the uh the electromorphosis uh electromorphosis boost as well um not terra but electromorphosis boost into 252 hp force by death water main uh water sorry, no terrain the, what was the all the belly bolt stuff again it was what so it is plus two uh modest belly bolts max special attack with electromorphosis into 252 hp flutter main oh so like a bulldozer 252 belly force by death okay yeah um the parabolic charge who um parabolic charge oh i gotta guess i think that's about one you're looking for i believe um all right i got my number 
All right. Oh, I have a number. I have a number. Uh, all right. Uh, let's switch it up. Let's, John, you want to go first? Yeah, I'm going to go 61. I don't believe in Billy Bolt at all. Mm. <laughs> all right, Alex? It's not killing, but it's doing more than that. It's 80%. And Ashton? I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go like 84. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, two of you are awesome. in the range. Um, Dang. Right, so we got a plus two. Okay. Um, two of us are in the range, then it's me and Ashton. Yeah, John's yeah, so far that's, away. That's <laughs> spoilers no spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, I, don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe in that mod at all. Parabolic charge is so weak. Well, the way I thought about it, I was like, okay, your parabolic charge is going to do like 20%, and then you're four times, so it's like 80. You know, and then like bump that up just a tad. All right, Adi, is the number 72.8 to 87? That is what I had, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking the original attack would do around 15, which is why I said 61. Man, but, throw, uh, a terror, right. throw a Terra on this, and you got a good chance to KO. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. You only need one more multiplier. Um, all right, not bad, not bad. Uh, how well did all the right. chat did do? You... I'm just double-checking. Ooh, a lot of people... I think some there. of them got in the range. Um, some actually, people no, no, no. Actually, like no, me. not a good amount over it. A lot of people are in the range. Um, yeah, pretty good guess. People, people yeah. are pretty good not at bad. this. Not bad, not bad. All right, did you did you figure out a, a guy, Alex? Did you figure oh, out? Oh, did I figure out one to go back and do? Um, I think that I want to do this um, this Quackoval one because like oh, I he's honestly using, he's using a safety quip, guys. Yeah, yeah. no, the the fun thing. Well, yeah, I wasn't gonna come up with one because like I I, I messed up. Anyways, <laughs> I and also I'm picking this one because I get to play along too. These ones don't have the answer. And well, I mean, I know uh, the answer. Though. Okay. okay. I won't um, be able to play. Oh, John doesn't know the answer. Sure, but I'll... Uh, or Sean, John does know the answer. Well, we're going to do it. It's plus one Quackoval, so it's got a Moxie boost. Okay. Uh, and Versus a uh, a pretty bulky flutter using Aqua Step. Um, all right, I got my number. Okay. Yeah, I got a guess, yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't remember the number, so I, I guess I can play still. <laughs> you can guess last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Maybe it'll unlock some memories or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You My guess. Your... Oh, you got yours, honey? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm guessing 115. 115. Mm. I'm gonna go. Kills. I'm gonna go lower, 95. Yeah, I'm going 110. I think it's up there too. I'm just going 99. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not, not a knockout. Yeah. Not I I don't have faith that this is always killing, but uh. Is if I had to guess, no item. It's no item. It's yeah. normal gem now. Um, Fluttermane. What was it? Two thirty-six. Two thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah, two thirty-six. Thirty-six. Mm. Okay. Um, Aqua. Oh boy, this is doing a lot oh. already. I have not even put the plus one in. Oh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> um. I'm okay. The stream. I think this is everything. Yeah. Okay. So ninety nine point yeah, okay. three to. Oh my gosh! Not... So Wait, yeah. John was wrong. John's not. Nah, John's what? not in there. You said ninety nine is right. Uh, okay. You whole numbers, it. guys. Whole numbers. Big no, whiff. No, no, Big I mean, whiff. Oh my god. It's fine. You can join me, um, in the whiff group. No, I knew it wasn't killing all the time. That's why I said ninety nine. Not killing okay. all the time. But... If you know it's not killing all the time, you say one hundred. Um, You're right, yeah, actually. True. Oh, but, he picks 90, but he picks 99, and he, he he ate that one. I threw. Unfortunate. I tossed that one. Um. All right. That's uh. That's all of them. Uh. Cool. So yeah. Sorry for for <laughs> messing up my one earlier, but <laughs> honestly, it was a meme one anyway. Nobody was supposed to know that it did between 677 percent to 800 yeah. something. Um. Nobody needs to know those types of calcs. Um. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Um, Ashton, thank you for coming on, and uh, thanks to John and Audie as well. Um, My pleasure. It's a good time. Um, so, yeah, you. we're going to we're gonna find uh, a channel to raid, uh, but before send, we do Send that, it over to... Uh, oh, yeah, check out check out Ashton on, uh, on Twitch. Um, I think you stream somewhat regularly now, right? I stream, yeah, I'm getting back into it. Hell, yeah. Let's see, is that um, going to work? That's going to work. Cool, yeah, go check out, go yeah, check yeah, out Ashton. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, thanks. Um, um, shout out to yes. Ashton Cox. Send it over to uh to Roos Bain, my my fellow Austin local. 
and I think okay. Moxie Boost is editor. All right, um, yeah, you're going to have to help me spell that one again. But also, I did not say it's... some of the outro stuff, so I forgot. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just th thanks, everybody, for uh, hanging out. And uh, also, remember, if you you know got in late and you weren't here for the beginning of the stream, that this is going to be going up on YouTube. Um, so we have the link for that in the chat. And, um, yeah, that'll be up in, like, two days at CK49. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that, then that's really it. Uh, we'll see you next time with plenty of uh, tournaments to talk about, plenty of results. Make sure to check out those streams. And uh, good luck to anybody competing uh, this